undefeated Texas Longhorns are steering in the right direction. Running back Priest Holmes and company will open conference play tonight with a perfect record for the first time since 1985. Can Mike Adams help the Horns avenge a 1992 loss to TCU? The Horn Frogs' big play man is Andre Davis, averaging nearly 150 yards a game. Quarterback Max Naki has yet to throw an interception in three games, and last week aired a beauty to speedster Jimmy Oliver. The Horns and Horn Frogs next on Special Order Sports. Can you remember the last time a Texas TCU game meant something? Probably not. So the party has already begun. I'm Brian Jensen outside Eamon Carter Stadium where the tailgating has been going on for a little while now. Hot dogs? Great. Sausages. Oh, we've got sausages over here. Is this the uh, this is official TCU? Oh, let me try that. Well, I better try that a little bit later. I might get in trouble here. Well, TCU fans have been partying not just because of the fact that their team has had a good start to the season, but because of what happened here the last time they played Texas. Longhorns remember, too. The year was 1992, and the Horns were under new direction from former Illinois and Kansas City Chief Head Coach John McAvoy. Meanwhile, the Horn Frogs' new man was first-time head coach Pat Sullivan. They witnessed a major Southwest Conference upset as Tony Rand's interception sealed a 24-13 Horn Frogs victory, the first win over the Longhorns in Fort Worth since 1957. Pat Sullivan was sitting on top of the world. Well, the TCU fans certainly hope the partying continues. We've had a hard time finding a Longhorn fan. They've already gone inside. I'm going to try this sausage as we go in to Bill Land and Ed Biles upstairs. Guys? All right. Thank you, Brian, and welcome to Eamon Carter Stadium. It's been many years since this ballpark has been filled for a conference game in the Southwest Conference as Texas, unbeaten and ranked 15th, takes on the TCU Horn Frogs at 2-1. and one. Hello, everybody. I'm Bill Land, along with Ed Biles. Glad to have you with us. I don't know if this game can be overhyped, Ed. It's very important. Yeah, it really is. This is the first time since 85 that Texas is coming in uh, undefeated. TCU with a 2-1 record. Opening ball game in the Southwest Conference. Obviously, the last year of the Southwest Conference. So it uh, should be an interesting uh, football game. Do you think that all of the attention and all the talk about this game, do you think the ball game can match the buildup? Well, both teams high-powered offensively. Both teams have the opportunity to score pretty good. I think whatever team the defense rises, makes some turnovers, will be the team that wins this football game. A near sellout crowd on hand. It should be exciting. Stay with us. We'll be back with the opening kickoff here from Eamon Carter Stadium in just a minute. Welcome back to a fast-filling Eamon Carter Stadium here in Fort Worth. TCU hosting Texas. Bill Land and Ed Biles up top and down on the floor for some last-minute news. Let's go to Brian Jensen. Well, Bill, this, of course, will be the debut for Lavelle Pinckney in a uniform, at least on the uh, actual game field. He, of course, has been waiting for the NCAA's word to uh, relieve his suspension. It did take place this week, so he will Forget play for Texas. How much he will play is still in question, and he will not start. But there is also one thing to keep in mind as far as TCU players are concerned, and that is Andre Davis, his condition. He had the flu on Thursday. There's been a 24-hour bug going around here. They're not concerned that he still has it as much as they are are concerned about his energy level. How long will he last? He, of course, is their main gun, so we'll have to wait and see on that. This is the earliest time that Texas and TCU has ever met, but it certainly feels like late fall down here. Kind of fresh, fellas. It certainly is a beautiful night, but uh, uncharacteristically cool for this time of year. The official weather, 67 degrees with a wind out of the north of 15. Expected to die down later on. The humidity, 64%, and partly cloudy. Just ideal weather for an ideal situation between two teams that are very hungry. Just a, It's a perfect night. You couldn't have to any better than this, Bill. The wind isn't going to be a factor. The game will be decided on the field without the outside factors. Are you ready for this kickoff? And what a beautiful setting. Never heard so much excitement and electricity at, at this stadium that the games I've, I've been doing. All right, TCU will kick it off as Texas won the toss and elected to receive. And kicking off for TCU will be Todd Fitzgerald, deep for the Texas Longhorns, Mike Adams, who played in his first game last week against Louisville. Adams got by one at the 25. Put 
rushed out by Corey Masters of TCU. And Texas has excellent field position. He's one of the best in the country. And this guy is a quick rising star in his own right. Quarterback Shea Morenz, who's thrown for 426 yards in the first two games. The rest of the lineup take a good look at Holmes. Priest Holmes, second in the league in rushing. Kemp, Jackson, and Davis rounded out. The offensive line, Brocker Meyer is an Outland Trophy candidate. It's big and strong again for Texas. Kemp with Holmes in the backfield out of the eye. First and 10, and running room and up near midfield and right at the 50-yard line. Walker, the carrier, hopes makes the tackle, and let's take a look at how things set up defensively for TCU. They've changed to the 3-4. Hyder, Rydell, a terrific walk-on, and West up front. Linebackers, Pylon, Anderson, Moulton, and Jones. And in the secondary, Stevens, Hopes, McWilliams, and Martin. First in offense, last in defense for TCU as far as total offense, total defense. So something's got to give here to the Frogs tonight. Second and one after the nine-yard pickup. And... Texas takes care of that right out of the chute as Jones tackles Walker. So Walker getting the start. He came in with 18 carries and 98 yards, averaging 5.4 per carry for Roderick Walker, a senior out of nearby Irving. Well, I think you see what way Texas is going to try to run the ball right over that left tackle position over Brockemeyer, the six foot five, 300 pound junior. First two plays right over the top of him. First team all conference pick a year ago. Texas folks feel he's got a shot at being a first team All American this year. First and 10 from the 47. Morales keeps it. He is stuck the loose ball. TCU's got it. Oh, mama. Falls recover. Vincent Pryor with a football. Just a down the line option play with the head this year. Renz goes in. There you see the ball stripped right out of there. And the recovery by number 89 for the big, big play. Pryor stripped it. Pryor recovered. And TCU, a team that has taken advantage of turnovers through its first three games, gets a break here. First and 10, 13.46 to go first quarter. Naki the quarterback. Nearly picked off and nothing but green ahead of Brian Westbrook. That's the Texas DB that had a shot at Naki, who has not thrown an interception in 94 passes now thrown this season. Max Naki, the starting quarterback, he's had an outstanding three games with 727 yards, and there you see it, seven TDs, no INTs. Backs and receivers, Andre Davis, their leading rusher and leading receiver. Second and 10, Woods joins him in the backfield. Collins shifts to the near side to set up strong for the tight end position. Davis tried to find a crease, got a yard or two. He is short of midfield. Making the stop, Jason Reeves, the outside linebacker for the Texas Longhorns. Offensive line, it's a veteran group. Robbins has played every snap, over a 1,000 snaps in a row. Third down and nine for TCU, and last week against Kansas, TCU was an incredible 13 of 15 on third down conversions. Long count for Naki. Nice protection, incomplete, intended for Davis out of the backfield, and he had some room to rumble had he made the grab. Let's take a look at the Texas defensive set up. Brackens and Clark are both studs. They, too, are the new 3-4 alignment. The linebackers, Reeves, Evans, Watler, and Watkins. And the Texas secondary, Westbrook, Carter, Thomas, and Ellis. Ellis has got an interception for a touchdown this year. Adams is deep for the University of Texas as the punter, Stevens, gets it off for TCU. Adams will let it go and into the end zone. And it's a touchback, first and 10 after a 52-yard punt by Stevens, who's been averaging 40 yards per kick. John Makovic, third year, 13-10-1 on the sideline for the Texas Longhorns. 
Well, we talked to John before the ball game, and we talked to uh, John McAvitt before the ball game about how they could be two and one at TCU with the defense has given up so much yardage. Your defense can give yards up as long as it gets the ball back, and that's what TCU's been able to do. Uh, our defense, of course, gave up a lot of yards the first week. The second week, we shored it up very nicely against Louisville. A lot of defensive coaches are always looking at the statistics because, in reality, statistics do begin to give you a picture of where you are, but the big plays also help out quite a bit. John Makovic, 2-0 this year, his third year, came from the University of Illinois. Went 30, 16, and 1 in four years there, and bowls in each year. Uh, th th that's exactly what uh, we were talking about, though. His, he, we talked to him before the ball game about how the defense, the defense that creates turners over here this evening can give up a lot of yardage, but if you make some interceptions and recover fumbles, you still control the ball game from your offensive team standpoint. Yeah, TCU last week, and also it depends when you give up that yardage because they shut down Kansas that was nationally ranked at number 23 to just 33 yards in the final quarter while scoring two touchdowns of their own. Texas has had a week off since the victory over Louisville. Let's see if they can get the rust off after that opening fumble. First to 10, Holmes, his first carry, out of bounds at the 26. Anthony Priest Holmes, 5'10", 190, a junior from San Antonio Marshall. Averaging 4.7 per carry, 227 yards on the year. Both have been 100-yard efforts in his first two games. 100 against Pitt, 127 against Louisville, his career best. And once again, they ran that ball on the left side, right over the top of Brock Vermeer. Watch that, watch that big left tackle. Watch the job that he's doing on that offensive line. 12.45 to go, first period, second possession for Texas. Second and four. Stopped short of the first down at the 27-yard line. Martin and the Favors with a tackle. Well, they've run the ball two times to the right side of their offense, and both times TCU has reacted very well. You see all the purple jerseys. There's four, five, six of them right out there. Both times, one a fumble and no gain. They've got to go back to that left side over the big fella. Third and two from the 28-yard line now for Texas. Longhorn's third down conversion rate, 56% through its first two games. Flags everywhere. Okay. Elmore appeared to jump off. There's Big John, 6'3", 290. Texas huge as usual, 300, 290, 280, 277, and 280 across that front. Let's go down quickly down to Brian Jensen. Guys, you've probably heard it already, but if you haven't, you certainly will. The frog horn behind me here, 3,500 pounds worth of gasoline and compression horn. This is uh, similar to the Texas Cannon, but they've obviously been playing it a little bit more than you'll hear the Cannon in 120 decibels. They say it'll break out a window if it's anywhere nearby. Fortunately, you guys don't have any. Bill, Ed? Well, how about Brian, my ears? It's been breaking my ears since we got here. I was going to say, I hope Brian enjoyed hearing before tonight because he better scamper away quickly. Just part of the promotional effort, and they've done a great job here at TCU. We'll have a chance to find out more about that, but season tickets are up over 9,000. They've done an outstanding job creating a real festival atmosphere around the ball game, and a huge crowd here tonight. Third and seven for Texas. Morens and incomplete intended for Roderick Walker out of the backfield. He had caught two coming in here, and there goes Morens, who a sophomore out of San Angelo, Texas, is a guy who last year that had a good season for 2,341 yards and 13 touchdowns. Here's Dwayne Vosick on to punt for the first time. Vosick averaging 34.9 per kick. John Washington is the lone deep man for TCU. Vosick from his 10. TCU had him coming. Takes a horn bounce. Inside the 30, down to near the 27-yard line, and a 45-yard kick for Vosick of Texas. Max Naki will bring him back on. We'll take a brief timeout. Stay with us. 11.31 to go first period. On a 
first and ten from the 27. TCU's Coy Woods, a sophomore from Bowling, Texas, carries the football, a flag on the play as he crosses out to the 34. Shane Rink made the tackle, 6'3", 250, a junior out of Houston, Cypress Creek. It's against the defense, the officials for tonight's ball game. Southwest Conference opener, obviously league officials. Barry Fisher, the head referee. And the rest, Davidson, Turner, Liner, Pfeiffer, Evans, and Wetzel here tonight. Barry, right, watch it. Watch the uh, top of the screen, the right side there. Watch the defensive lineman jump. Too quick, didn't get back. It'll be first and five for the TCU. First and five from the 32 now for the Frogs. Nothing happening that time as they go up the middle again. And Coy Woods carries. Woods averaging 4.4 per carry. Jason Reeves and Tony Brackens make the tackle. I know Pat Sullivan told me yesterday, Ed, really concerned about Brackens and Clark. Those two guys can really control a football game. Well, they're they're fine defensive line. Of course, Clark, 350 pounder right there in the middle. So your center's got to in for a long, long evening. If he can't handle him one on one, he's going to probably have to give him a little help. And they keep moving over and under. They move a little defensive line. This time they're balanced. But most of the time they'll take a tackle, move them one way or the other over the nose guard. Second and four from the 34. Naki nearly picked off, knocked away up front by Baskin. Thomas Baskin, 6'2", 277. It'll be third down and four from the 34. 10.38 remaining in the first period. TCU's second possession as the Frogs had a great opportunity on a fumble but couldn't advance. Take a look now. What? What? That should get his hands up here. The pass is thrown. Let that big hand go up. Knock it down. Incomplete. He completes it at the 35-yard line, short of the first down to Jason Tucker, his third grab of the season. Jason, a freshman from Waco out of Robinson High School, and Norman Watkins made the tackle. And Texas is held again. This Texas defense has won. They really shuttle the linebackers around. Nine different guys have played at the linebacker spots. They've had seven different starters in just three games. Well, interestingly enough, both teams high-powered offense, and we thought they'd be moving the football, but on first four possessions, not much yardage. Bo Stevens, the junior from Dallas Trinity Valley with the punt. Adams takes it from the 10. 20. And Adams stopped at the 25-yard line. Adams... Returns it, pretty good shape for Texas. It'll be first and 10 for the Horns. No score, we'll be back. Fifty-three remaining in the first period. Texas and TCU scoreless. Bill Land, Ed Biles, and Brian Jensen with you here at Eamon Carter Stadium in Fort Worth as Texas will get the football at the 25-yard line. John Makovic, it's not been an easy start to the season. All kinds of injury problems for the Longhorns. There's always pressure, of course, in Austin. 2-0 sometimes isn't good enough because you don't win by enough. Victories over Pitt come from behind, and the same for Louisville. And, of course, there's been the ongoing situation of problems involving the two-star receivers, Mike Adams and Lavelle Pickney. Adams reinstated for last week's game, was a little bit rusty, and then Pickney didn't get to practice until Monday and was ruled eligible by the NCAA on Thursday. He's expected to see some action here tonight. Well, in regards of all that, they still are a fairly young football team. Rockamar, the left tackle, is a junior. Elmore, the left guard, is a junior. Neal is a sophomore at the center position. The right tackle, Joe Phillips, is a junior. Jay Morenz, of course, is just a, just a sophomore. Reese Holmes is a is a junior. Mike Adams is a, is a junior. Pinckney is a junior. Matt Davis is a is a uh, sophomore. So they're still a young football team. Walker, the lone back behind Morenz, first and ten from the Horn 26. No score. Robert Walker got a block. Thirty. Shakes one loose. Almost stretches for the first down. Give him nine to the 34. Maybe. 
eight, Martin, and LeFevre's making the tackle. I'll tell you something, you got a fine football player. When you can take your left tackle, watch Brockemeyer, they're going to pull him, 78, watch him pull, come all the way around the horn. Now, this is a 300-pounder. Go down and make that type of block. That's why he's been promoted as an All-American candidate. Six foot five, 300-pound junior who's already made two letters out of Fort Worth here. Arlington. Arlington Heights High School, his father attorney here. Pitney is in the game for the first time. Man in motion is Eric Jackson. And Morenz fakes them all out, goes deep, incomplete. Intended for Eric Jackson. Boy, nice ball fake as Jackson or the Morenz made. And that defensive line bit. Pretty good recovery by the defensive back, though. Jackson had a step or two on him. The defensive back got twisted and turned around. You can see McWilliams trying to recover, and I think just enough of his presence there kept the ball from being caught. You see him kind of waving his hands. That's not interference because he didn't touch him or didn't get around him. Good recovery by Charles McWilliams out of Austin. Lanier High School. Holmes and Kemp, the backs in the eye this time. Texas third and two from the 34. Keep it on the ground. Got the first down, 40. Holmes out of bounds at the 44-yard line, and that'll move the chains for change for the University of Texas. Strong safety, the favors makes the stop. Junior out of Amarillo. Well, again, take a look at the left side of the line. Look at Blackamar come out. Look at him just, just take 91, just driving all the way around the ballpark there. It's just every block he's made so far, he, he's blocking a, a sophomore Burton, but that's what sets up that uh, that type of running game. So far, the player who has controlled the game has been Brockermeyer. And Holmes has already topped last year's total yardage. He had 237 on 39 carries last season for two scores. And he came in with 227 to this game. First and 10 for the 44. Morenz, great protection. Going deep. Incomplete. Just off the fingers of LaBelle Pitney. Pitney, 6'5", 234 out of Washington, D.C. And Pinkney, you saw him hit himself on the head there. He knows that that ball should have been cut. I think his lack of practice and, and lack of being around, he just didn't run all out here. Looked like he kind of lost his stride somewhere down through here. Kind of misstrided a little bit. Ball right out of his fingertips. He knows he has six points. Great. Look from Renz hanging in there. Watch him get hit as he releases the ball, though. Put it right on the money. Excellent pass. Almost six for the Longhorns. Pickney and Adams combined for 18 receptions in last year's Texas win against TCU. On the second and 10, up the middle to Holmes. He is stopped after a couple of yards at the 46, maybe 47-yard line. Reggie Anderson inside linebacker for the Frogs out of Austin. LBJ, LBJ high made the tackle. Well, I think the, fr uh, the Frogs were pretty well alert to the fact that sometimes, a lot of times when Texas throws the ball deep on first and 10, they will come back and run the ball on second down, trying to put their quarterback in a third down possession so they don't have to throw the ball too far. TCU well alert to that. Adams goes to the top of the screen on third and seven out of the shotgun. Morenz, a quick drop, incomplete. Intended for Adams, covering was Martin, and Texas will have to kick it away now. So here's two teams that come in averaging 30 points a game and no points yet. Both of them just a little bit nervous, I think, offensively. I don't think they've quite settled down into the heat of this game. There's been an awful lot of excitement, all the noise, uh, probably more noise than, than both teams have played in so far this year. They will settle down. That last pass was a direct result of they hit the play before. Morenz kind of threw that one off his back foot, and it sailed. Washington deep, he averages seven yards per return. Vasek, who had a 50-yarder, stands on his 32 to kick it for Texas. Washington signals the fair catch, nearly bobbled it at the 22-yard line. TCU will take over when we come back. First and 10 from the 22, Andre Davis, Jr. from Longview, Longview with the ball. He carries to the 26-yard line. Davis has had a sensational start, 449 yards rushing through the first three. He's eighth in the country at 149-plus per game. Fisher ruled that he was down, the ball was fumbled. Texas went in there and thought that would have it. Uh, Fisher ruled that he was down before he made the fumble. Davis also their leading receiver at 11 per contest and two scores. Huge part of the big comeback last week against Kansas. And that's what really got 
the whole Fort Worth area jumping and the, the Metroplex for that matter to push this game to 43,000 tickets sold before today. This place holds 46,000. Again, on the ground to about the 28-yard line as Reeves makes the tackle on Davis. Pat Sullivan has nothing but praise for his junior quarterback, Max Naki, who last year was intercepted a number of times, and this year has yet to give one to the other guy. Well, I think age matured. Yeah, you know, two years ago when Max was... A, Max really ought to be a redshirt sophomore right now, probably still watching somebody play, but... You know, when we, when we got here and started, uh, Max had to play some as a pure freshman. And then last year, you know, he took virtually every snap. And, uh, you know, it was a learning process for him. But I think the thing that's impressive about Max is that, you know, he got knocked down a bunch of times, but he kept getting back up. He's a very competitive person. And he's not a total finished product yet by any stretch of the imagination. But so far this year, he's really done a good job for him. And he shows you there as Naki goes to Brassfield on a third and four. Good for the first down to the 39-yard line. Naki last year, 12 touchdown passes, 14 interceptions. As you look at Pat Sullivan and he like Makovic in his third year here, 8-16-1, the former Heisman Trophy winner. First and 10 from the 39 and tripped up at the 40-yard line during the football that time. Derek Colliers, who suffered an injury in the opening game against North Carolina, a ligament strain, and had nine carries for 61 yards in that game before he got hurt. Davis comes back in to replace him here. That was made by Tony Bracken, the outstanding defensive lineman for Texas. He was the Southwest newcomer of the year last year, just a sophomore, 6'4", 230 pounder from Fairfield, Texas. TCU really needed that first down. That's the first one they've made. They need to give their defense a little bit of rest over that sideline. And a timeout is called. We'll take a break here as well. We've got 5.35 to go in the first period. No score, TCU and Texas. Yeah, it's as good a night as it appears on your screen. What a night for football. Brian Jensen enjoying it on the sidelines. Brian? Well, Bill, this was also supposed to be a pretty good night for baseball, but uh, we all know what happened to that. Texas Ranger trainer, Danny Wheat, joining us now. He used to be assistant trainer here, too. I was a trainer here as a student going to Texas, and... Uh, Called the trainers, left me some uh, passes, so enjoying being here tonight. Well, you had a little trade out. What'd you do for them today? Well, I took them down to the clubhouse in the training room, showed them around the ballpark. Okay, well, we'll be checking it out here. They may need Danny after a while, and he's here for them. Incomplete, intended for Coy Woods. And TCU will move it now right. to fourth down. I beg your pardon, third down, third and ten from the 40. Good outside pressure put on by Kevin Watler, the outside outside linebacker on that play, right up in, in Naki's face. You see Naki two of six for 15 yards here in the early going. Came in 53 of 93, well over 50 percent. Third and ten from the 40, no score. 5:31 to go, first period. TCU with the football. Collins in motion. Naki. Across the middle, incomplete. Incomplete, yes, that's what they ruled. Collins had a hand on it, but would never rule the reception according to the official. We'll have a chance to take a good look at this. Well, the tight end is extremely important in a ball game like this, especially on the possession. You see him coming in motion now. 6'5", 225 pounds going across field. Ball should have been caught right into his hands. He tried to turn and run before he caught the ball. Incomplete pass. Bo Stevens on to punt. Last week punted once the entire game against Kansas. This is third punt here. Adams on the 23. And across the 35, he's the leading punt returner in the conference. Averaging 14 yards return. Davern makes the tackle. You see the TCU fans that are geared up. And the whole TCU effort is much more organized, I think, than it's ever been, Ed. As Pat Sullivan says, we've got to recruit fans. He said, we don't have just enough alumni to pack this place. He said, but if people will treat this as Fort Worth team, we can get this building where we've got your capacity. I don't know whether they're more organized, but they're a lot louder. I know that. There's a lot more <laughs> noise and excitement in this stadium. And uh, last week's victory over Kansas certainly got them gassed. Uh, 
I think, though, the fact that they played North Carolina so well, a nationally rated team on the road, and then win, went out and beat New Mexico, a team picked by many to compete for the WAC title this year. They beat them in Albuquerque. That got people fired up for last week, and then the exciting come from behind fashion just set this one up. John Makovich club uh, does uh, certainly not come in here with any overconfidence. The only time they've lost last 26 years came right here two years ago. Well, they played about 10 minutes now in this first quarter. I think right now you're going to start seeing both offensive teams settle down a little bit and get into some rhythm of the type of plays that they want to want to do. Texas, uh, again, with having success running the ball to the left side, and I think you're going to see the Marins maybe try to hit a closer little uh, inside passes and some uh, curl routes rather than going for the bomb here. Matt Sullivan, who's taken TCU 2-8 and won his first campaign, then 4-7 and seven last year, and their first five games this season are about as good as anybody around the country. You take a look at competition. Kemp and Walker in the backfield, and Lorenz. Got a man, it's Pitney at the 40, 35, and stop there. Lavelle Pitney brought down by the favors. He's such a huge target at 6'5", 234. You give Lorenz that kind of time, that's going to be tough to stop. Well, but just what we said, they threw a couple deep ones. It kind of loads it up the secondary of TCU. Now he comes across, bringing Pinkney across the middle. He's got all day, no one near him in the pocket, and he's going to hit that big fella coming across there. Pick up a 31 yards for Texas. Great protection. Look at the pocket. No one's close to Lorenz. Again, look at Rydell, fighting, fighting, but no one's getting loose. He had all day to complete that pass. Rydell's quite a story in his own right. A, yeah. a transfer from Emporia State who had to uh, walk on here, and because he didn't have anybody to practice with in August, he was out hitting trees in an Arlington Park. He said, no, it wasn't trees. It was actually some logs and a backstop from a baseball field. Yeah, but unfortunately, those trees were just like he was rushing there. They didn't move and <laughs> didn't, didn't fight back, so he, he better forget he's going to his blind bodies. He's got to get rid of those trees and get around them and get to the quarterback. There he is, and Hayes Rydell, 6'1", 230 aside. For and uh, went to Emporia State in Kansas. Uh, just did not like being out of the state of Texas. Comes back here and he's our leading tackler with 34 coming in. Let's go down to Brian Jensen. Well, you know, you mentioned the uh, fact that the crowds are something that they really want to try to draw here at TCU. Even the students have gotten a little more excited about what's going on at TCU. All the face paintings, check this out. I want you to see this guy right here, though. This is Ben, and I'm going to call him Lightning Man. Where'd you get that face painted? I got my face painted. <laughs> my money and my son goes to TCU. So, some mother sitting at home saying that. <laughs> Said, boy, oh boy, maybe we should have rethought that deal, huh? <laughs> Great to see the atmosphere in college football uh, just cannot be matched. John Makovic looking at the play sheet as Texas has a first and 10 at the 34 of TCU. Best penetration for Texas so far. It's been a rather uneventful first quarter other than a Texas fumble that TCU is on a not available to take advantage of, and it's first and 10 here. Right up the middle, across the 30, and down to the 25, that's Roderick Walker. Ball was fumbled, and TCU signaling they've got it, nothing from the official yet. Officials apparently ruled him down because the TCU is up with the ball running to the sideline. Official must have ruled that he was down. Roderick Walker down and got the first down, too. So a nice pickup by Walker out of Irving Nimitz High School. One thing, I don't think you ever have to worry about a Texas team coming in the Metroplex and ever being too overconfident because so many of these players play their high school ball around here. There's too many parents, too many family and friends aboard for them to get too cocky. Passing formation. First and 10 from 24. Morenz, great protection again. In the end zone, touchdown Texas! Goodness, what a grab by Pickney. Great catch. Lavelle Pickney last year, five TD receptions on 47 grabs for 686 yards. Who says that big fella needs to practice? Woo. connects for his fourth TD pass of the year. Texas is on the board. And here's Phil Dawson out of Lake Highlands High School, a freshman for the PAT, six of six on the season. 
4.14 to go first period. Kick is up and good. And Texas jumps out to a 7-0 lead. Pitney had both big plays. Yeah, it was a great, was a great play. Now take a look. This is from the end zone. Look at Morenz. You can see him looking right back down, reading the coverage, looking, got plenty of time, plenty of protection. He lays it out there perfectly, right over the top of the defensive uh, back into the hands of Pickney, who worked a great pass by Morenz. Now take a look at the other end of it. Watch Pickney. He's coming down, makes a little move to the inside, then he goes right to the outside. It almost looks like McWilliams is going to recover. But what a great pass and a great catch. Great execution. Watch him hit the wall, though. Ooh, boom. Well, the wall didn't give, but he rolled real good with it. Good job by both Morenz and Pickney, and a great job by the offensive line giving him that protection. Now, again, Morenz is just playing so much cooler and with so much more maturity. Three plays, 64 yards, and... Shea Morenz, who had an outstanding baseball season for Texas last year, playing both sports. That isn't easy, particularly for a quarterback. And what a start here. Let's go quickly down to Brian. Bill, it is very important for the Texas team to get Lavelle Pinkney started early. As you know, the last game they played was Michael Adams' the first game back, and it took him a full half before he got the confidence back in the locker room to come back in that second half and have that big, big half. Well, Lavelle Pinkney, the coaching staff, wanted him started a little earlier. Apparently, it has happened. The kickoff, that ball is loose at anybody's football. Still on the ground, Texas has got it. Longhorn football. Well, so often you'll get a big play for a score. Special teams comes down and pops somebody. And the next thing you know, another great opportunity. That's what's happened to Texas. They've got a first and 10 on the 21. Recovering the football was Allen for Texas. Well, take a look. This ball was high, very high. Would have been caught, running forward. A little miscommunication there between the re receiver and the up man. Looked like they had a chance to get it. Texas alert. Now Texas in a great position to put TCU in a big hole here. And let's see if Lorenz strikes through the air or if they try to grind it out. First and 10 from the 21 of TCU. 7-0, 413 to go, first period. He wants it right now. Across the middle, Adams, and then deflected in the end zone, and a flag is thrown. And they pass interference call. Adams touched it, and then Martin was covering. There was another DB back there for TCU, I believe, that had a shot, but obviously wouldn't have mattered with the interference call. Again, great protection. Look at Marenz waiting, watching for Adams to make the inside break. Came down, went to the inside. Ball was right there. An obvious interference call, an easy call for the official. Defensive back over the top of Adams. Adams had the inside position. Defensive back pretty well knew he was going to catch it if he didn't interfere Pass with it. interference on the defense. 15 yards, automatic first down. Well, as I said, about a minute and a half to go, I thought Texas was going to settle down, and they have settled down offensively. And you got to like that thinking, Ed, when you get the break to come right back and try to make it a quick hurt. Well, I think that's you know, philosophy of most coaches to get a chance, and they were in great field position on TCU's side of the field. And Lorenz has he's been hit once tonight pretty good, but for the most part just had great protection and plenty of time. There should be a running play right down over the big fella. Holmes is the ball carrier. Nearly squirts in on the two tight end set that had Fitzgerald and Bradley set up on each side. Aaron Burton, a sophomore from nearby Euless, made the tackle. Well, take a look at the Longhorn offensive line now. 300, 290, 280, 277. Look, watch him control the line of scrimmage. You see him blowing back, blowing the, the purple jerseys back off the line of scrimmage. Even though you get in there to make the tackle, the forward motion and the momentum of the back, you're going to pick up six yards. Kemp and Lucas, the split backs now, second and goal to go from the one. And still nothing doing. Ball's trouble around. Ball's ball. TCU may have gotten the ball. Oh, official, official. Well, I thought the ball was on the ground, and then we heard whistle. Well, uh, well the official said that the play was stopped. Otherwise, it looked like TCU never. But again, watch him coming over to the left side here. Trying to pull the left guard to get a little, what to call a horn block, stepping around the outside. He's trying to reach the ball. Well, see now, that could be interpreted, but the, the play was still going. And Texas in lines up and diving up. Dan over is Priest Holmes. Priest Holmes with a touchdown for Texas. 
So the one-yard dive, TCU fans don't like it, neither do the players. But a Texas, a Texas touchdown makes it 13 zip. Well, they made a great attempt to try to stop it. It's going to be very close. Evidently, he, the ball must have penetrated the goal line. One-yard dive for Holmes, his third score of the season. Here's Dawson for the point after. Lucas is holding, now a running back who uh, used to be a quarterback for the Horns. Dawson's kick is up and good. And Texas takes advantage of the turnover after the fumble on the kickoff. The Longhorns hammer it in. Holmes a one-yard dive. It's 14-0 Texas. Well, now it's extremely important, Bill, for TCU's offense to make some first downs, go down, make, put points on the board. It's extremely important that they don't have one of these quick three and out series. Take a look at the, at the touchdown play here. He goes up in the air. Boy, that is close. That is close. Oh, that's extremely close. You gotta be able to see that again. Let's see. I didn't look, didn't look like he got up that high. Here's another angle of it. And he goes up. It looks like the, the purple jerseys are on the Texas side of the ball. When he came down, he certainly wasn't across the goal line. Well, when they look at the, when the TCU people look at the tapes of that, they're gonna that's gonna be run back a bunch of times, especially after the one they didn't call a fumble on the play before. Only 122 to go 21 yards. Holmes caps it off, and Texas. After a slow start offensively for both ball clubs, Texas comes alive and leads it by two touchdowns. We've still got 2.51 to go here in the first period. And the Horns kick it off. Short kick and nearly a reenactment of the last one. Well, the special teams coach told them that if they kick the ball high like that again, make the fair catch signal. That's a, that's a situation to make a fair catch just like a punt. Now, I'm not too sure that uh, Hanks knew that the uh, player behind him, see, see the player behind him signaling for fair catch, signaling for fair catch, backing up. Avery makes the grab. Chad Avery, a tight end. Yeah, behind him was Matt Moore, a freshman. Signaling for the fair catch. And Avery, Avery did a good job, and that's what the coaches, special teams coach discussed with him after the first one they fumbled. So, Max Naki and crew got their work cut out for him. Woods and Davis behind him now. First and 10 for the 24. Clogs down by two touchdowns. Davis sidesteps one tackler just to get back near the line of scrimmage as Tony Brackens was there to make the tackle. Ed told you Brackens, the Southwest Conference newcomer of the year on the defensive side. Guy's just an outstanding player, sophomore from Fairfield, Texas, known as Big T. Well, the other thing I'm extremely good about him, and actually, he recovered on that play, was blocked, but he used his speed. Looked like TCU might have had something going on that play, but he used his speed to go right down the line of scrimmage and make that tackle. Brackens came in, their leading tackler on the year with 15. Second and 10 from the 24. Davis, the lone back behind Naki. Naki rolls out. Got a man complete. Near the first down as Collins made the receptions. The reception is going to be close. I think he's got it at the 35, though. Take a look at this now. What set this play up is a great run action fake by Naki. Watch the fake. See the uh, Texas defensive folks are still going with the flow. He rolls out to the backside, gets the ball to Collins, who was the Southwest Conference tight end leader of receptions last year. Watch the action now. now watch the good job he does of making a fake there. Look at Brackens. See how Brackens was faked out in that play? He actually thought he handed it off, took him out of the play. Collins, 37 grabs a year ago, came in seven for 79 yards in this one. Flag thrown on the first and 10, and Davis is stopped near the 39-yard line with a penalty. I think Naki's doing a good job of mixing up his uh, starting count. I think Texas jumped offside again. I think he's going sometimes on quick counts, then sometimes on longer counts. And when he goes on the longer counts, Texas defensive line are having a tendency to want to get after him. Offside on the defense, five yards, repeat the down. Well, Naki is an interesting story. He, uh, out of McKinney, and uh, a fellow that uh, visited Texas, obviously grew up like so many youngsters uh, in the state wanting to go to UT, found out he'd be playing behind Morens and said no thanks, and comes here and would like nothing better than engineer a TCU victory over the Longhorns. First and five after the penalty. Naki complete to Davis out of the backfield and Davis run out of bounds at the 42-yard line. 
You gotta get to the 45 for the first down, so just a couple on the pickup. One eighteen to go in the quarter. Yeah, that was a good play. Bill, but he ran it into the short side. He didn't have that room to operate after he caught the pass. I think one of the things TCU like to see him come up with a screen pass here right now and the, with the rush at the defensive lineman for Texas attempt to throw might be a good play. See Naki's numbers so far. Second and three. Ball on the 42 of TCU. They're down 14 nothing. Davis hit hard. Andre Davis, a junior from Longview, brought down by Walker and Akins. Chris Akins. Yeah, they take Clark out and they bring in Akins. Here you see him, 96. He's only 308. Yeah, they take the 350 guy out and they put a 308 guy. And again, you can see the good fundamental job that he did. He stood up the offensive lineman, got rid of him, and just moved right down the line to the ball. Called playing the piano in the old days. He used to tell those defensive linemen, play the play the piano. Davis, who's averaging over 149 yards a game, eighth in the nation, only seven so far with under 40 seconds to go in the first period. Third and four. Naki dumps it. Complete to Woods at the 50 and across into Texas territory with a flag thrown at midfield. He's got the first down and maybe a late hit to move. And Bill, as we talked about, it, TCU's got to settle down and move the ball, and they're just doing exactly that. If they can continue this drive and get on the scoreboard, they get themselves right back into the football game. Well, as they talk it over, you know, Pat Sullivan's talked about this team being one of the most disciplined teams he's had, and that means sometimes, Ed, we're not talking about non-troublemakers. We're talking about staying within themselves, being able to handle a situation like this, and they're proving him right. Well, that's maturity, uh, and that's good. Your, co your coaches have a lot to do. That 15-yard personal foul penalty against uh, Texas. John wants to know what it was, how it was called. He doesn't disagree with it if it was there. He just wants to know who did it. Let's see if we can pick it up. Let's see if we can pick the first of foul play up here at the end of the end of the play. Knock you back to pass. There's the completion. Of course, here comes Woods with it. Right there. Went to the head. Went to the head. Almost an automatic call. First Again, 10 from the 35. They jumped off the second. Got back in time. No flag thrown. And nothing doing for Andre Davis. Texas, through two games, a team that uh, certainly would like to improve in the penalty category because that's been a problem for them throughout the start of the season. We'll take a brief break as that ends the first period. Texas on top, 14-0 over TCU. fans pulling for a drive to get them into the end zone here. They're down 14 nothing as we move to the second period. Welcome back to Eamon Carter Stadium. Bill Land, Ed Biles, and Brian Jensen with you this evening. And that's a young frog fan there. <laughs> i tell you what, uh, all the changes going on in college football and of course TCU going from the Southwest Conference to the Western Athletic Conference. Last time these two will play here at this stadium, at least certainly in a conference game. And a lot riding on this one as TCU 2-1, and one, season league opener, Texas 2-0. and oh, Second and 10 from the 35. And the running game has just been stuck. Woods this time the ball carrier, and Baskin was there. Thomas, senior from Riverside, California. 6'2", 277. Right, take a look now at the offensive line play. Good job by everybody being alert to stay in effect. And look at uh, Baskin just stand his man up, read the draw play, slide over, and make the tackle. Third down and now 12. You see Woods work so far. Three touchdowns on the year. They need to pop one here if they're going to hang tough. Knocking. Complete. And the receiver got by two or three defenders. That was Brass Brassfield before he's finally brought down. That was a heck of an effort just to get back to the original line of scrimmage on this series as Brassfield is brought down at the 36-yard line. Well, they faked a screen pass to the right side and came back with a screen to the left side. Kind of tough to get this done on a third down a long situation. Seemed looking to the right side. Now he comes back. This was developed as a screen. There are people out there looking right ahead of him looking to make the block so they come back in the play. But uh, Texas had those five defensive backs and were well alert that that was an obvious passing situation. So TCU will try a field goal here. The ball on the 35, a 52-yard field goal coming up. 
for Michael Reeder, a walk-on who has done a nice job so far this season. Timeout called by the Frogs. Let's see if they reconsider. They'll talk it over down 14 zip. Michael Reeder, a redshirt freshman out of Montgomery, Alabama, is three for three in field goals this year. 30, 39, and 47 yarders. The 47 against Kansas. He sets up here for a 52 yarder. Wonder how his grandfather's feeling right now. His grandfather played for Texas in the, in the 50s. Mixed emotions and hit that. Yeah. No, he's, he's rooting for his grandson. He better be, huh? All right, 52 yarder. Good hold. The kick is off and short, though. And Texas will take over. So TCU stays scoreless. Reader on the 52 yarder. And Texas will get the football back with good field position. Down to Brian Jensen. Well, Bill, it is obviously important for the TCU team not to get too down. They were very high coming into this game. Dr. Cynthia West joins us now. She is the mother of defensive lineman Royal West, but she is also a doctor of psychology. So I've got to ask you now, you come down here with this cowbell and root them on. How much does that help? It helps tremendously. My son has always been motivated by my husband and my enthusiasm. And we've always been right there as close as we can get to him wherever we go. And he just, he thrives on it. So I know for him it works. Quickly, from a psychologist's perspective now, what do, what, what do they need to concentrate on here on the sideline? They need to just take one play at the time and remember their victory. They can be victorious. Just one play at a time. That's all it takes. Sounds like sound advice. Boy, and his mother, let me tell you something about his mother. She's been married to Coach. Royal's father is a, is a coach, and he has moved around so they could be where his son. He's coaching at Winona, Texas, which is not too far for him, so he can see. So, oh, remember about that psychology. She's learned, learned a lot from her coach and husband. The heck with that psychology. She sounds like any coach. One play at a time, one game at a time. Well, right now, they need to stop Texas. It's second and nine after Holmes one-yard carry. Morenz in the play action, and he completes it to the tight end out at the 40-yard line, and that is Steve Bradley with the reception for Texas. And one thing you notice, uh, Bill, that Texas is doing, they're playing a lot of players. Uh, early season ball game, sometimes it gets warm. He, I think uh, one of Makovich's ideas, he can wear TCU down in the latter part of the third quarter and in the fourth quarter. Bradley, of course, is their number three tight end behind Hanks and Fitzgerald, sophomore out of Arlington, Texas. Yeah, they spread it around. Morenz last uh, ball game against Louisville hit 10 different receivers. That's the most since Peter Gardier went to 11 in his stay at Texas. And the first catch for Bradley, third and four. And complete right off the first down marker. It appears they'll have it. Chad Lucas with the reception. Speaking of quarterbacks, 6'2", 235, a senior out of Katy, Langham Creek High School. His second reception of the season, first of the night. And uh, after playing behind Morenz and some others, they moved into the running back spot this year. Well, he just wanted to play. He wants to play some college football, good hands, ran, down, ran a good route, just enough to make the first down. Well, the Texas folks will tell you, remember Jim Jensen with Miami, that type of role. Can play running back, tight end. If you got to put him in a pinch, of course, he could be your quarterback, too. Walker in the lineup, first and 10 from the 47. Lucas, the man in motion for the Horns. A 14 up Morenz. Great protection. Lucas completes it at the 49 of TCU. Gets six on the play. He does a great job here now. Watch Lucas going in motion. Going to the outside. Going to run a little bit of an outright. Really not the first choice. The ball is thrown low to the outside. Good job by Morenz. Again, keeping it away from the defensive back. No chance for the defensive back to get in there and make an interception. The maturity of Shea Morenz is just amazing. Well, he's just seemed to be so much smarter, so much cooler now than he was last year. Has him second and six, got four on that pickup. And hand off to Holmes. Run out of bounds at the 44 yard line of TCU. Just short of the first down. It'll be third and round one as Stevens, a strong safety sophomore from Fort Bend, Texas, made the stop. Well, Holmes shows you the speed that he had on that play. That was a play that looked like it was going to be stopped for maybe a yard or two loss. But Holmes, watch him show his speed here now. This play looks like it's going to be stopped for maybe a yard loss. Right in this area, right here, looks like he did. But watch him use his speed to get to the corner, turn up field, and make a few yards on the play. Got to go over Brockemeyer, don't they, here on this situation? No, hard not to. Lorenz gives the Holmes. Got the hole. 
stopped at the 43-yard line. First down for the Texas Longhorns. Mike Bolt, the middle linebacker, the stopper for TCU. And rightfully so, they're going to run to that left side, but somewhere along the line during the season, Renz is just going to take that ball on a bootleg out off of that situation, run one down the sideline to pick up big yardage, because everybody knows he's going to go to that left side in those key situations. John Makovic, who will call right now, 57, 46 and two in his ninth year as a head coach. First and 10 at the 42. Kemp in motion. Morenz with a play action. Intended for Kemp. Juan could not come up with it. And it'll be second and 10 with 10.29 to go before halftime. TCU on the short side. Texas with a 14-0 lead. Longhorns opening the year with a 30-28 win against Pittsburgh. Home opener, they come from behind to beat Louisville, 30-16. Their best start since 1985. And Pinkney says to him, I can get open, whisper to the quarterback, they can get open. Well, after what Pinkney caught for that touchdown pass, I gotta believe him. <laughs> Doesn't matter if he's open, he'll go get it. Well, first and 10 incomplete pass, usually they run. Here's the running play again. Across the 40 to the 38-yard line is Roderick Walker, brought down by Mike Bolton again for TCU. Here's a look at the senior from Irving Nimitz, Roderick Walker. Last year, 345 yards and a 4.9 average on the ground. Bill, I think this is an extremely important third down situation for TCU. We really need to stop Texas on this third down and keep them getting any more points on the board here early here in the second quarter. Third and six of the 38 of the Frogs. TCU trying to stiffen up. Morenz out of the shotgun. Got a man complete, but no first down. Hard hit on the play as Walker was stopped by Reggie Anderson, the senior, 6'2", 228. Roderick Walker brought down, and Texas will face a fourth down situation. Well, they're going to make a decision. They want to go for field goal. They want to go for it on fourth down. Let's see what the decision is. On the 36-yard line, Good play, good tackle in there by Anderson. Pass was thrown underneath, wanted to try to get it up to running. Uh, we said that third down play was big for the obvious reason. Now if they're going for it on, the, on fourth down, it becomes even bigger. Yeah, Texas turns down a 53-yard field goal opportunity on a fourth and four from the 36. And Morans gets away from one man. He unloads it, and he completes it at the 30-yard line. First down, Longhorns. What a nice job by Morenz to get loose, and Bradley made the reception. Yeah, that's probably the biggest play of the ball game so far uh, against TCU. That was a play that if they'd made the tackle, uh, they'd had to the, the football. Now, Texas, an opportunity to go and get more points. Well played in defensive position. Let's him escape. Again, Morenz with his great athletic ability. That's why he's such a great athlete. He can make things happen. He can look at Bradley totally. Bradley ended up with that one between his legs. Look at the yardage here in Texas on first down, and that sets everything up. Out of the backfield, Kemp is brought down after a couple of yards. 8.38 and counting in the second period, and let's go down now to Brian Jensen. Got a Dallas Cowboy with him. Well, that's right, and you guys said that uh, they spread it out to 10 receivers due to the Texas Longhorns. Well, they need somebody in there to make the big play. Larry Brown just said that. What about you? Well, man, you know, I'm, unfortunately, I'm unable to play. But uh, I think they're going to be fine. they got to get some guys to come out there and make a few plays for us, and uh, we'll be fine. Well, let's go up to this play, but I want to ask you one more thing when we come back. All right, Larry Brown visiting with Brian at second and seven. The ball at the 26. Horns keep it on the ground. And across the 20 and diving on the play, Roderick Walker. Back to you, Brian. Larry, do you remember the times that you were in there against Texas? How did they turn out? Well, they, Texas always have a good team. Uh, I think TCU has a very good team this year. they got to be able to uh, play hard. And, uh, Every down, you know, they, they're playing a couple of downs good, but against a good team like this, you got to be able to play four downs consistently. So are you giving some advice over there, coaching in your future? Uh, no, nah, not possibly, <laughs> man. You know, I won't mess with that. I'm not over here just giving a little support. Thanks, Larry. All appreciate right. it. Ed would back him up on that, I got a feeling. <laughs> First and 10 for Texas. Morenz got a man at the 14-yard line. And down to the 13, and that is Jackson. Yeah, and Curtis Jackson out of Plano. Yeah, in answer to your comment, Bill, yeah, the only thing you want to be is either an owner 
or a player. Nowhere in between. Either own the team and make all the money or a player and get all the money. Unless you're a baseball owner and player and then you just don't play or you that's, don't pay. Well, that's another that's another subject that doesn't make a lot of sense for me either sides of it, but uh, somewhere along the line something will develop, I believe, baseball-wise. Holmes lines up for a second and four behind. Morens, the quarterback. On the draw. Holmes got a gap. Ten. Five. And down inside the four-yard line is Priest Holmes. Holmes on the carry. Well, the success of this play is based on it. You've seen this at the Washington Redskins years ago. They pulled the backside guard and backside tackle. Rakamar and Elmar, both of them pulled on this play, coming to the front side where the play was running. You got that 300-pounder and 290-pounder out in front of you. Pretty hard from a defensive standpoint to stop that unless you get some penetration. Micaiah Martin made the tackle for TCU. Holmes and Kemp will line up this time. Kemp shifts to just the left. First and goal for Texas. Morenz. Intended for Kemp. He was popped hard after that one went away. These are Ozzie Martin and Stevens there to cover for the Frogs. And Kemp, of course, transferred from Michigan. There it is, high school football in Cyprus. Mock Creek down in Houston area. Here's a replay. Looking to his right. Nothing there. Comes back. Looks to his left. Tries to lay it out. Or oh, catchable ball. That ball should have been caught. Whew. Goes down as an incompletion from the quarterback, but they have a category of drop passes to penalize the receivers a little bit instead of the quarterback. Second and goal from the four now for Texas, up 14-0. Inside, and no signal yet. Carrying the ball is Holmes. Still waiting, going to be just shy for Texas. Again, they turned around and ran a play to the left that time where they pulled those backside linemen. Well, John kind of gave the signal there. Those hands look like they made something inside. Maybe a wedge play. Wedge play up the middle. Just go forward. TCU thought they made a goal line stand last time. Did not get the call. They certainly would need something here. It's third and goal from the one. Kemp and Holmes. Holmes with a dive, and he's in for the score. The game. Texas 20, TCU nothing. Holmes is second TD of the evening. That big fourth down play where Lorenz made the escape and made the first down. Could be an extremely big play in this ball game. Now TCU looks like they're going to be trailing by 21 points here in the second quarter. Will force them to do things they don't want to do. 17 plays on that drive, very methodical, and 65 yards. It took seven and a half minutes, and Texas punches it in. Lucas to hold for Dawson. And Dawson goes 9-9 nine nine on the season. And Texas up by three touchdowns with 5.56 to go in the half. We'll be back with a kickoff. Fifty-six to go in the second period. Bill Land, Ed Biles, and Brian Jensen with you here at Eamon Carter Stadium in Texas. What a drive by the Horns with Holmes getting his second score of the night. And it's Texas 21, TCU 0. Well, that's two great drives. The last couple of times they've had the football 64 yards and 65 yards. Did pretty much what they wanted to do. Mix the plays up. Running plays, passing plays, occasional play action pass in there. We've got a good mixture going right now. Texas uh, offensive coordinator Gene Golfus and his offensive line coach Pat uh, Watson love what they're seeing right now. They're taking advantage of the weight advantage that that offensive line has. And right now, the, the Longhorn fans that are in that uh, side of the stadium are certainly enjoying the first half of this football game. And TCU, the leading offensive team in the league and the number eight defensive team in the league as far as yardage has been stuck for the most part offensively and defensively have uh, really just not done much to slow down that Texas attack. They haven't been able to get anything started in the, any rhythm in the, into their offense. And the kickoff to the three-yard line as it comes to Jimmy Oliver. Flag thrown, and he's run out around the 14-15 yard line. Oliver, a senior from Dallas Adamson High. And the Texas fans obviously happy. They returned 2,500 tickets for this game. The TCU folks uh, 
as much responsible for this huge crowd as as anything. Well, those Texas fans are pretty well spoiled. You know, they've won 25 out of 26 wins against uh, against TCU and uh, TCU did upset them there in 1992. Yeah, yeah. But uh, most of the times they pretty well count on this being a win because Naki and crew come in. Yeah, in Texas uh, after this week. It's Colorado, and I don't know if you saw the finish, but Colorado, a wild winner. Illegal and a miracle in the back. finish against Michigan today. On the return, well, I would think Texas will get Colorado at a, end of the ride, at a good time next, next week. Colorado with a big win over Wisconsin at home and a big, big win today over Michigan. They could be celebrating those two wins and maybe have a little bit of letdown next week as they come in to play Texas because they handled Texas very easily last year. It'll be hard to convince the hit teams of Texas is that's much improved this year. Pat Sullivan concern is ball club. You've got to get something going with 5.49 to go and they're deep in their own territory at the seven. Naki going deep, flag thrown, and out of bounds. Flag was thrown back at the line. The that usually indicates holding. Jimmy receiver. Oliver, the intended receiver. Max Naki. It's been a rough half for the junior from McKinney. Well, when your offensive line just hasn't doing a good job of opening up holes, you can't get your running attack going to settle anything down, and... Uh, you fall behind 21 to nothing. It's no fun to be the quarterback in that position. On the offense, there's decline. Second down. And this is usually kind of a situation where sometimes your quarterback gets in trouble. He knows he's got to make something happen. He wants to make something happen, and he'll try to force things. That's sometimes when you get that interception throwing ball. Second and 10 from the seven. the end zone the ball carrier Davis and he has run out of bounds at the 11 yard line Trey Thomas the strong safety makes the tackle for Texas Andre Davis it's a guy that uh, Pat Sullivan had his differences with over the time here at TCU but said he has really decided he wants to play our game plan he said for a long while he had his own game plan but enough stadium runs have convinced Andre He's coming off the flu Thursday. Saw him at practice yesterday. He was feeling fine. He, uh, quite a character. And uh, Pat's one of his big boosters now. It wasn't always that way. Third and six. Ball on the 11. Naki. Wide open across the middle. First down and more at the 35. Washington. 45, 50 and out of bounds on the Texas sideline. John Washington, a sophomore from Longview. And the Broghorn celebrates. Boy, did every football team needed to play like that was a, was a TCU team. The position they were in here, being behind 21 up, and that being a third down play. A little play action fake here. Key to this thing was protection. See how wide open he is? That allowed Washington to go down and come across the middle. A slow developing type uh, pass pattern, but the protection held up. Big play for TCU that they needed badly. 40 yards, and it's first and 10 on the 49 of Texas. 527 to go in the half. Time is not a factor for TCU. They just need to establish something. They've got to get on the board, I think. Have any kind of confidence going in to the locker room. Across the middle, Davis with the dive. Davis. Got a couple. Stopped by Thomas Basket. And you can't just sell out to the pass at this point either, right? Well, yeah, there's no, you can't, there's no 21-point play, so you've got to be realistic and say, look, let's see if we can fight our way back into this ball game. There's five minutes here remaining in the first half. If they could go down and put seven points on the board here, it would give them a little momentum going into half, halftime, and, and their offense would have something to hang their hat on. Well, this ball club came from behind in both of its victories over New Mexico and to the University of Kansas. They were leading at North Carolina. They certainly have more confidence than they've had in past years. Naki, they got to waste a timeout. Time they got to waste one. We'll take a break as Pat Sullivan will talk it over with his quarterback. It's 21-0 Texas, 4.46 to go in the half. Washington, sophomore Galen Hyder. Thanks for your part for supporting. Okay. Also, thanks tonight for your safety. Okay. Okay. Boy, loving it down there in Houston, huh? Ooh. John Cooper laid it on. a and That'll be a good game. Again, that's TCU football with Pat Sullivan. Sunday night at 10 o'clock on HSE. 21-0 as Pat Sullivan kneels down, trying to find the play that'll get him going here. The 40-yard pickup by Washington. 
And then a three-yard run by Davis. It's now second and seven at the 46 of Texas. Bill and Ed Biles and Ryan Jensen with you here at Eamon Carter Stadium. Beautiful night for football, but hadn't been too pretty for the Frogs yet. Texas with Holmes two TDs and Pickney a TD pass from Morens controlling things so far. Second and seven. Looks like a blitz. Collins in motion. Naki saw it. Dumps it off to Woods out of the backfield. 35. Knocked out of bounds. First down. TCU. Bumped into the play by Trey Thomas. For a great adjustment by Naki. He read the blitz. You could see it coming. The linebackers were edging up. He picked it up. The receiver picked it up. See him coming across. Now they are blitzing. You can't see him right there, but Again, Woods gets breaks out into the open. He almost took it to the house. Good recovery by Thomas from Sugarland Kepler High School. Make the play. First and ten at the 26. Deepest penetration now for the TCU Horn Frogs. Only scoring opportunity. They missed on a 52-yard field goal attempt. Naki. Complete. Oh, incomplete. Receiver could not hang on. That was Collins, and he got rocked by Thomas Naki. Now 8 of 15 for 99 yards, but what a shot that Collins took. That would have been a sensational grab. Well, you might as well catch those guys. You're going to get hit anyway. That's the <laughs> second drop by Collins. You know, Naki 8 out of 15, but they should have been caught Paul. That ball's right in his hands. He's got to catch those kind again. He's a good receiver. Like I said he led the Southwest Conference last year for tight ends in receiving. Second team all league pick. There's Naki's numbers. You see, still no INTs. Second and 10 from the 26. Collins in motion. They come that direction. And Davis down. Say his knee touched before he got to the 15. They'll mark it around the 17 yard line. They did not give him a liberal spot, did they? No, no that first was, down. That was close to the first down, but the Fisher brought it way back. Market uh, just outside the 17, so a big, big third down and one for Pat Sullivan's Frogs. Well, I think he'll go for it. Uh, if they don't make it, I would think he would go for it on fourth down. Plenty of time. We're still four minutes remaining here in the first half. 3:58 remaining, first half. 21 nothing Texas. TCU marching them. Davis, a loss on the play as Davis. May have gotten back with a second effort, leaning with the ball to the line of scrimmage. Jason Reeves was there. You're looking at Brackens, also there for Texas. A very good running by Davis. On a play like that, he's got to take it and stick it up in there. He tried to start up and go, go to the outside. Texas defensive line, too quick for that to happen. And uh, Fans wanted him to go for it here. Fourth and one. They're showing field goal as Reeder will try a 34-yard attempt for TCU. Reader missed the 52-yarder earlier. He gets this one. Pat Sullivan saying, long night. Let's just get something on the board. And they do as Reader connects with a 34-yard field goal. And it's 21-3, Texas. Let's go down to Brian. Now that the TC has gotten on the board, I can pass this little note along to you. A couple of years ago when Texas lost to TCU, the players tried to bring down the goalposts. They only bent them, didn't break them. Well, this year, they've oiled the top of the goalposts to make sure that doesn't happen if TCU does come back. <laughs> Protecting against their own players. I think they might be protected against Texas players. Texas players, you know, a couple of them said if they win, they're going to go tear the goalpost down. Yeah, and I think uh, Texas, I don't think a lot of times players remember too much, but I think that uh, for those Texas players, because they'd won 25 last 26, that I think there really is some motivation, as well as the fact that so many coming back to play in their home part of the uh, state. Well, I think Texas players are, are hungry to win football games. Uh, you know, they've suffered a little bit. People have been kind of up and down on them. Uh, they're off to a two-win season, the start of a potential great season, and they want to go to the Cotton Bowl, so I think they're interested in winning these games. Well, you saw the TCU drive, and uh, can't say enough for TCU at this point. They had their backs to the wall sitting down there deep inside what was about the seven-yard line, and they come out of this thing, go the length of the field, get a touchdown. That could have been a disaster. They could have gotten something stuck back in. It could be 28 zip. Instead, at least they put something on the board. They got a little more better. Yeah, they could, have, they could have folded their tent and, uh, and put things in, and as you said, it did make a big third down play to get out of the hole. But conversely now, 
Uh, three minutes and 13 seconds remaining here in the first half. I don't think Makovich will sit on the football. I think he's going to go after another score. So it's up to the TCU defense to make a big play somewhere along the line here. Uh, the kickoff, Adams is deep, and he is always capable of breaking them. And goes out of bounds with a flag thrown at the 21. Well, that's not the way you want to start, uh, start a kickoff with. Well, I guess that's one way to keep Adams from returning him, but <laughs> again, you, you certainly don't want that. John Makovic. Of course, uh, years with Illinois, was with the Kansas City Chiefs. Wake Forest used to be an assistant with the Dallas Cowboys back in 81-82, and everywhere he's been a head coach, he has turned the program around at Texas. He's not trying to turn it around as much as he's trying to get it back to where Texas fans and people expect, and that's in the top 10 every year. Way back in the 60s, he was a coach on Bo Schembechler's staff at Miami of Ohio. Coached against him in one of the fine outstanding college games. Came from behind and won on a two-point conversion. We beat him 29 to 28. He still remembers that game. Once in a while, he'll comment about it. Doesn't he? You didn't remind him, did you? No, he thought it up. <laughs> I really did. First and 10 at the 35. Walker across the 40 to the 42. And here's the next challenge for TCU. The way this Texas offense has come untracked since the latter part of the first quarter, you got to hope you can shut them down. Yeah, I think it's extremely important that they keep Texas out of the end zone here in the last three minutes of this first half. Don't let that first running play lull you into sleep. I don't think they'll sit on the football. Walker, seven carries for 48 yards. His best game in his career came against TCU as a freshman when he ran for over 100 yards, 104. Morenz spots a man. It's Jackson, and he's wrestled down at the 47. They'll mark it at just shy of the 50, though. Curtis Jackson, Jr. from Plano, came in with six receptions for 79 yards. Well, that's another first down. That's play action pass. Fakes like he's going to hand off the running play. Comes back, looks. Great protection again. Look at the time he's got in the pocket. He looked out to both sides of the field. He started right, went back to left, and then came back to the left side for the completion. And TCU's defense got to get a little more pressure on him than that. Moran's 10 of 16 for 94 yards. He's been averaging 213 yards a game through the air in the first two. First and 10 at midfield. There's a bootleg. He got crunched as he let it go. It is incomplete. No, there is a flag throw. Intended for Aaron Jackson, Charles McWilliams covering on the play, and Morenz gets up slowly. He was popped in a sandwich of TCU players. Pickney checking him out. Called by the officials. Good call. Defensive back got turned around. Never got, got himself in a position to see the ball. Watch this hit. Well, that's a little bit late coming in there. Watch the defensive that's back get turned around. On the defense, 15 yards. Tried to recover. Automatic first down. It was McWilliams on the other interference, was it not? Charles getting turned around a little bit. See him right there? Didn't pick up the ball, didn't locate it. And you see the reaction from Eric Jackson, the senior from Corpus Christi. Well, they're in position now on a 35-yard line. Still two minutes to go here in the first half. And as we said, Bill, I didn't think Texas would sit on it. They wanted to get something. If they can get something, another touchdown full of half, they know they got this thing well under control. First and 10 on the penalty at the 35. Kemp is in now. Morenz has got him for a safety valve if he needs it. All day for Morenz. Anthony Nolan near. Tucks it under to the 25 and out of bounds at the 23, 22 and a half yard line. Shea Morenz picks up the first down on his own as Vincent Pryor makes the tackle. And that is a rarity. He's had 12 runs for minus eight yards coming in here. Yeah, but you can see the superiority of the, of the Texas offensive line. Look at this. I mean, he's looking around. He's still looking downfield, still looking downfield, waiting for someone to get open, still has time. Now he decides there's an opening over here, and he can, he can run the ball and pick up some pretty good yardage. And that doesn't take a lot of time off the clock, that play, about seven seconds. Boy, that has really got a concern. Pat Sullivan and new defensive coordinator Pat Henderson. Texas first down, number 14. First and 10. Up the middle of Walker. Straddles a TCU defender. Hops across the 20. Down to the 18-yard line. And although Morenz has been hit hard a couple of times, other than that, he's had very little pressure on him. He's never had the steady pressure. Well, he's, had, he's been able to kind of sit back in a rocking chair and throw the ball away. He wants it the way the offensive line. And, of course, when you can mix the running plays with the passing plays and 
Texas has been very impressive here this evening. Pickney to the top, Adams to the bottom on second and five from the 17, and Moran dumps it off, intended across the middle. Well, he, read the, he, he read the play correctly. Uh, TCU came with the blitz, a little slow with the blitz. He knew he wanted to go to. He tried to get it to Kemp on a little check out of the middle. This wasn't completed. We'll see TCU coming with some people coming right up into his face. They were a little slow, a little delayed with the blitz. And as you can see, the receiver was open down there. And now third down and five at the 17. And no assurance here the way Texas is going if TCU stops him that they won't go for it on fourth down. Well, I think we'll kick the field, we'll kick the field goal in this situation. Moran's going to keep it. And he is shy of the first down as he saw that opening, tried to shoot through there, close quickly. Good pursuit by TCU that time at the 17-yard line. He needed to get to inside the 13. And Lenoy Jones makes the stop, Jones. Junior, from Grossbuck, Te Grossbuck, Texas. Yeah, I think John will go for the field goal here because, again, if he kicks the field goal and makes it, he's got a three-touchdown lead. And they will bring on Phil Dawson. Dawson taking over for Scott Charetti, who's an outstanding kicker. And Dawson, four of five in the field goal category. His long, a 50-yarder, has only missed a 52-yarder. So Texas, of course, over the years has had some great kickers. It looks like Dawson's Texas. ready to step up in that line. A timeout is called by the Longhorns. A lot of college football action today. Let's take a look at some of the scores from around the country. And in the Southwest Conference, this is not the only conference game. I have a chance to show you Houston, of course, non-conference, hammered by Ohio State, 52-zip. Ohio State probably pretty nice to them. They were ahead like 32 to nothing in the first quarter. Rice beats Iowa State. Jim Walden, a tough go up there. SMU and Tech in the league game. Out in Lubbock, and Tech wins 35-7, and they were in control throughout. And Southern Miss, hammered by Texas A&M, 41-17. And Baylor and USC still to go tonight out on the West Coast. Southwest Conference is off to an impressive start this year. You see Baylor at 3-0, A&M, Texas also unbeaten, TCU at the 2-1 start. And with the uh, victory in non-conference play, 11 victories they've had coming in here tonight in non-conference play. Last year they only had 12 for the entire season. So. Just gives you an idea how improved the league is. Well, I think Baylor's game against Southern Cal will be a, a good indication of how the league really is going that way. And of course, Texas game against Colorado next week will be another one of those games that comparison can be made on. Let's see what Texas has done in its league openers. 34-yard attempt coming up here by Dawson Lucas to hold. Good snap. 20 on the kick. And Texas gets back that field goal that GCU got on a few minutes ago. It's Texas. 34-yard field goal by Phil. Dawson, he now goes five of six on the year, and the Longhorns make it a 24-3 football game. 21 seconds to go in the first half, and Texas up 24-3. And now TCU, I guess uh, you just play out the string here for the end of the half. Well, they go regroup. Well, depending on what happens on the kickoff return, and I'm sure they'll kick one of those high ones again so that their coverage team can get down and, and do the job. Yes, I would think they'd want to go in and kind of regroup and Texas offense well on their way to another over 400 yard game. They've been over 400 yards in 14 of their last 24 games. Don't forget that you can check out how both your teams are doing. Longhorn and Frog fans, we like to remind you that HSE is the place to find Pat Sullivan and John Makovic. Coaches show Sunday night, Texas and John Makovic at eight. Pat Sullivan comes aboard with the TCU highlights at ten. That's on HSE each Sunday night. Game continues this way. Who do you think will have much more fun doing his coaching show tomorrow? <laughs> That's a no-brainer, isn't it? Kickoff comes and taken at the two by Jimmy Oliver. Brought down inside the 15-yard line. Oh, my goodness. What coverage by Texas as Robert Crenshaw makes the stop for the Longhorns. And that will probably determine the play selection for TCU. Yeah, I don't think there's any question after this now. The Crenshaw comes all the way from the right side, all the way across. Spending too much time looking. Look at Crenshaw sift through there. 
Make the tackle and pull him down. Yeah, that ball back on your own 13-yard line, you certainly don't think you're going to be able to go the length of the field in 16 seconds, especially when you haven't scored a touchdown yet with just one field goal to show for the half. So I think CCU will just kind of run a running play here and go to the locker room and talk about this hurricane that's hit them. 16 seconds to go before the end of the half. And they do keep it on the ground, and Davis is stopped at the 15-yard line. And no timeouts called. They'll let the clock wind down. And the Texas crowd, and of course there's a good group of Longhorn supporters here in this big house tonight at Eamon Carter. And they like what they've seen. It took a while to get on track, but Pickney got him going with a 24-yard pass reception for a touchdown, and then Holmes two TD runs. And then they traded field goals, Reader for TCU and Dawson for Texas. And that leaves us at 24-3 here at halftime. And let's go down now to Brian Jensen. Well, Bill, hopefully everyone will like what they see with our halftime lineup. We'll be talking live with TCU Committee of 100 Chairman John Roach about the big crowds that are here tonight. We will also have a special feature on John Makovic. We'll introduce you to Bill, on, or uh, rather, Andre Davis, the running back for TCU. And, of course, Bill and Ed will have highlights of the first half. That and more coming up at halftime. It's 24-3 Texas. three Texas with 10:39 to go in the third quarter. Longhorns led by 21 at the half. No scoring here in the second half yet as Texas gets the football first and 10 on its own 31. As John Makovic looking on, trying to get his ball club to 3 and 0. Boy, they are in a uh, real gauntlet. To, uh, if they didn't anticipate TCU being as strong as the Frogs have been, they followed it with Colorado and then Oklahoma. And it certainly has not been an uneasy situation. It's been an easy situation for John Makovic with the problems with Lavelle Pickney and Mike Adams. He discussed how he's handled it. We've had so many things happen on and off the field, injuries, you name it. But our players have reacted beautifully. They've really done a great job of being able to put things aside. And what we've talked about is take control of the things that you really can do something about. And they've heeded that. We've had to overcome a lot of obstacles, but we've done it, and we've done it very well. Play action, and Morans dumps it out to Harrison. He gets his second reception of the night. Kenny Harrison for the University of Texas on the play. Good job of the linebacker, Reggie Anderson, reading the play action pass. Makovic, those close to the program will tell you, has really handled what has not been an easy situation real well so far. Well, John's had a lot of experience. You know, the head coaching experience at Illinois, the head coaching experience at, uh, at Kansas City in the pro leagues. He's had some uh, people in the pro programs that wasn't, you know, Sunday school teachers. So I think he's had some experience along those ways. Second and nine after Harrison's grab, the sophomore from Port Arthur in motion here. Morenz finds him. Did he hang on? No. Harrison could not come up for the back-to-back -back grabs, and it'll go to third and nine for the Longhorns. Coverage by Reggie Henderson. Ball was well stuck in there. Catchable pass. It's amazing how many balls are dropped by the uh, receivers that goes incompletion from the quarterback standpoint. I think Morenz has just been very, very, very impressive with his passing attack and his touch. Mixing up the plays, looking over the choices, because all that is helped by the fact that he's getting great protection. 12 to 21 for 116. He's had three or four drops at least. He sprints out here at third and nine and out of bounds. And no flag. The uh, and there is another maybe improvement in Brent's game. Folks at home say no big deal, but he didn't try to make a great play and risk an interception. You know, you got a comfortable lead. Don't give TCU any motivation. Well, that's, again, the maturity of, of a quarterback. You see him play, sit, sitting in zone coverage. No one's open. You see the three deep there. And again, he's still looking around the field as he's coming scrambling to the outside. So rather than risk an interception, defense is playing well. Go ahead and punt the ball. Bosick averaging 40 yards a kick tonight. Stands on his own 14. Washington is deep. Here's Dwayne's kick. Out of Irving McCarthur. Washington fair catches at 
the 37 yard line and that's where TCU will take over. 10-13 to go in the third. And they're starting with pretty good field position here now. Ball up on the 36 yard line and again, this is too good a football team I think uh, to not put some points on the scoreboard. Somewhere along the line they got to get themselves a little drive. He's just got the feeling that uh, is doing a good job. Needs a little help. Needs a couple of receivers to make some big plays and catch the ball and help from his offensive line and you might see him put points on the board well this is a team that's averaging 442 yards on total offense a game and they've done that against two of the three teams they've played have been nationally ranked teams so it's not like they've been beaten up on some puds to get into this situation you know, i think they win against kansas kansas was ranked about 23rd in the country last last week when they when they defeated uh, kansas and they played of course a very good north carolina yeah carolina was 13th football team. this week yeah 13th and i think of their, their ball game they're uh, just trailing uh, i think they're playing florida this weekend they may only be behind by seven in that football game so they played a couple pretty good teams but i think texas is showing you uh, here this evening that they are a team that's going to be reckoned with. I think they're on a mission to get back into that Cotton Bowl. These, you know, these players on this team right now have never been to the Cotton Bowl, and I think they're on a mission this year. And you see the big crowd here at Amon Carter Stadium. Last week for the Kansas game, 37,000 here, well over 43,000 tickets sold for this one. First and 10 at the 36, TCU down 24-3. Naki across the 40, complete 45, and out near midfield. That is Coy Woods out of the backfield. And Kevin Wattler made the tackle for Texas. One of the adjustments that you'll see much more and more of this year from Texas with the changing of the defensive uh, coordinator, they have gone a lot more to zone. It used to be strictly almost man-to-man 90% -man of the time. Now they're mixing zone in there, and this is where Nopke's going to have to hit patience and hit some under underneath passes to be satisfied with making some seven, eight, nine-yard plays. 13-yard pickup makes it first and 10 at the 49, and Woods is popped and then leans back just to get to the line of scrimmage. These two teams have been running up, particularly some offensive numbers, as they both are averaging 30 points a game. Let's take a look in the SWC in the early going, how these two ball clubs stack up statistically. You see TCU 442, number one in the league tonight, just 136. Texas 385, 219 tonight. They're on their way to a great night. And John Makovic over the years at Texas, his first two seasons, they've averaged 395 yards a game. Second and 10, knocking on the backfield. Davis almost broke a tackle, but Texas just hanging tough as Aikens makes the stop. This, well, let's just say this is one of the plays we just talked about, and they've got to have patience with. Doesn't look like much, but it's a five-yard play. Texas sitting there playing zone. You've got to get receivers open in the seams of those zones. There's an underneath man. The linebacker has to come up. If he misses a tackle, becomes a big gainer. But you have to have a lot of patience to stick with those type of plays. You can't have the ball tipped. You can't overthrow the ball because the deep, deep backs will intercept it. Third and fourth to 45. 8.38 to go in the third. Collins in motion for the Frogs. Knocky. Going deep and incomplete, and interference is going to be called. Washington, the intended receiver, Westbrook covering for the Texas Longhorn. Yeah, I think Westbrook got that arm out there two or three times. I think it's a, no question who this penalty will be against. It's going to give uh, the Horn Frogs a uh, first a first down. I'm surprised they went deep in this situation, though. They needed the first down. If they don't make this, they've got to punt the ball. See, there's a little push off by by Westbrook. Here it is again from another another angle. You see, took his eyes off the ball and looked for the receiver, and that's when he had to push the receiver because he wasn't real sure where the receiver was going. And had him pretty well covered. Well, Pat Sullivan hopes right now that this quarterback continues to have patience get into that end zone. Ron Kemp says, don't worry, we're all right. Well, TCU, first and 10 on the 30. The Frogs trying to move it. Davis. Now, a little push that time from the line, but still just a yard or so across to the 29. Second and nine as Tremaine Brown, linebacker, made the play. Sophomore out of Amarillo, Palo Duro High School. Well, the key to outside running plays is the blocking of your offensive tight end. In the case of this evening, though, that offensive tight end is lined up against some outside linebackers there. Watkins, of course, who's 230, 35-pounder with a lot of experience. He can handle that running play. Gave him two. Second and eight at the 28 now for TCU. 
Naki. That protection. Got a man at the 10. Five. Touchdown, TCU Washington. Oh, mama. Frogs are on the board with the TD. Protection. Number one key. Secondly, good job of Naki of reading the zone coverage. We hit behind the linebackers in front of the, in front of the secondary. A 28, 28 yard TD reception. Washington is first score of the season. And Max Naki hits him. And TCU makes it 24 to 9. Here's Reader for the point after. He's 11 of 12 this year. 24-10 as the Frogs get on the board first in the second half. We're back with a kickoff in a moment. Texas lead trimmed to 24-10, and let's take another look at Naki's strike to Washington for the TD. Take a look at the protection. Huh? This is a shot from the end zone. You can see the offensive line play. See the protection? That's the big key. You can see the linebackers underneath in the deep secondary. He got it over the linebackers and in front of the secondary. Okay, now take a look at Washington. Washington's going to come down. You see the up man in the zone hits him, lets him go now. Now there's a, there's a group in front of him and a group behind him. He gets a little bit of a bump there. He's running one way. The defensive backs are running the other. That way he was able to get into the end zone. They did a great job now of having patience on that drive, picking the Texas zone apart. Naki's eighth touchdown of the year on the passing end. He's had... No interceptions, folks, this season. And TCU at least has been doing things as far as the lack of turnovers that's kept them in this game to where they finally get it untracked offensively. Naki was 3 of 3 that time. Adams takes it across the 15. 20. And breaks through across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Mike Adams for the University of Texas out of Arlington Sam Houston High School. There's the drive, officially a 29-yard TD pass. Naki to Washington, five plays, 64 yards. Well, you know, Adams one of those guys who just has excitement, Mr. Excitement. Every time he gets his hands on the ball, people are, the people who he's playing against are a little bit scared to death. Their fans and his own fans think he can make something happen. He's averaging 17 yards every time he touches the football. Kickoff, punts, receiving. Tremendous average. Camp and Holmes in the backfield out of the eye for Texas. Morenz gives it off to Priest Holmes. He's got two scores tonight. And he dashes out to the 38-yard line, maybe 39, where Mike Moulton makes the tackle. Moulton had come in with 16 tackles in the first three games. Well, now the key, obviously, from the TCU standpoint is that their defense can stop Texas and give their offense the, the ball back here quickly while the offense has a little momentum going. Second and five for the Horns. 7.03 to go in the third. Kemp and Holmes stay in the game. Holmes the up back. Got the football. 45 spins, midfield almost. First down, Texas. The favors with the stop from the strong safety position. When the blocking wasn't good on that play, great job by Holmes. You see the great job by Holmes running the ball. A poor tackle by TCU, however you want to look at it. Uh, the play should have been stopped. They're pulling the backside guard and tackle. You see Brockemeyer, but there's one missed tackle. There's another missed tackle. There's another missed tackle. Or you can say another fourth missed tackle. Or you can say that was great running by Holmes. Take your pick. First and ten from midfield for Texas. Moran's play action. He got nailed. Incomplete. He got hit just as he released the football. And that was Royal West who pounded Shea Moran. Oh, what a shot he got on him. Well, that's just one that takes your breath out of him. He's, he, he's going to be okay. He's really a tough football player. But I'll tell you one thing about him. He is really hanging. He's had great protection. But he is really hanging in the pocket, waiting until the last second to get rid of the ball. That's why he's getting hit here. Look at him waiting, waiting, waiting. He knows he's going to get hit. The man was in, in position, but he really waited for the receiver to get open. Intended for Adams. Second and ten from midfield for Texas. Two wideouts to the bottom of your screen. The draw play. Kemp in trouble. Danson got loose and made a positive out of a negative situation. 
knocked down at the 46-yard line of TCU by Manville Holmes, but this should have been a loss in the play. Well, again, this was Kemp. This is a draw play. Wants to take it inside. It's not there. There's a missed tackle. Now he chooses his feet here to outrun those two players. Little juke fake there. Not under control. Defensive back. Missed tackle. And he really turns a three or four-yard loss into about a two-yard gain. Now here again is one of those third-down plays where TCU makes it. They'll get the ball back and with their offense with a little momentum. And their fans realize that they're coming to their feet over there. See the third down conversion. Third and eight for Texas. They got to get to the 40 of TCU. Morans did it. Complete and out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Eric Jackson on the reception out of Corpus Christi Miller. 5'10", 193, a senior, Eric Jackson. First down, Texas. Now they set this up. Now he's, this is a design play. He knows he's going to go to the outside. Watch the, uh, Lucas come in, give him help on the block. Now right there, poor job by the defensive back. Stevens should have been looking around for the receivers and backing off into his area. He could have knocked that pass down. He's too busy looking at Moran, not knowing where the receivers were at. Good job again by Moran's of buying time. And Texas, first and 10 at the 32 of TCU. Adams in motion. Holmes. To the 30. And then held on before he's tugging out of bounds. The favors made the tackle. But Priest holds. Well, add them up. I think you're getting in the situation now here late in the third quarter that the athletic ability, uh, the depth of Texas is beginning to show a little bit. TCU getting a little bit tired defensively. Texas has been playing, you know, two or three different people in every different position, giving them the opportunity. And you can see that speed and the extra weight just kind of slowly creeping into play here. Speaking of creeping, Baylor creeping up on USC. Seven zip in the first out in Los Angeles. <laughs> Second and five on the 27 is Kemp the lone back and Morenz to throw again. Incomplete. Flag is thrown. Oh, that looked like a nice defensive play. Oh, that was a nice defensive play. Stevens. And it's on McWilliams. And that's the third interference penalty on McWilliams tonight. Pickney, the intended receiver. No, he was you, coach, looking at it live. It appeared as a good play. Uh, the, the official right on top of the play signaled it incomplete. Uh, this is, is going to be very close. This is really going to be close. There's a play where he comes right there. Pass interference yeah. on the defense. He's got to learn to get that back 15 backhand. yards, automatic first down. The problem he's doing is he's getting his backhand on the back of the guy. He gets his left hand in there, but the right hand is on top of him. The official right there didn't see that, but the deep official did see it. You, you teach a defensive back to throw your lead hand in to knock the ball down, and the other one should go high so that official sees that you don't do that. Holmes in the backfield. Look at the penalties. They're adding up. First and 10 on the 18 as Texas trying to answer the TCU touchdown. Holmes stopped for basically no game. Mike Bolton made the tackle. It's 24-10 Texas with 5.53 to go in the third. TCU getting on the board this half on the touchdown pass from Washington, from Naki to Washington of 29 yards. Come along the line, you're probably going to see Texas run some type of uh, a little reverse or a little type of uh, of counter play. They've been running and right now TCU is starting to chase and trying to get some help with those plays. Walker in the backfield with Kemp. Walker. Stopped after a couple of yards. And let's check out Brian Jensen down on the sidelines with us. Brian? Right now the trainers are working with Mike Adams on the sidelines. They're putting towels, cold towels on his head. He took a blow to the head. They say he was just a little bit dingy coming off the field, and hopefully they will be able to send him back in shortly. Uh, he's up right He's up right now. He's ready to go. Kind of shaking those cobwebs out of there. He'll be back in the ballgame. They get close to touchdown time. Uh, any good receiver wants back in the game. <laughs> Walker and Lucas in the backfield now third and eight. Morens. All day. All day. Someone's got to get open. He's got a touchdown. Texas. It's Jackson this time for the horn. Eric Jackson. Wide open. For the touchdown. Offensive line touchdown. Get the curve to the offensive line for that touchdown. Morens threw it. And Jackson caught it. But the offensive line gave him all day to sit back there. 16-yard pass play from Morenz, and Morenz gets his second TD pass of the night. Jackson answers.
Racers for Texas as it's 30-10. Here's Dawson for the PAT. Well, you just can't say enough about Phillips, Elliott, Neil, Elmore. And the job they've done. That one's true. Kick it good. And the Longhorns will go back up by three touchdowns, 31-10, as you take another look at Morenz connecting to Jackson for 16 yards and the score. Carter Stadium and the TCU side not real happy as they trail by 24. Let's go down to Brian Jensen. Well, when things go bad, they really go bad. TCU has um, actually lost a cheerleader tonight as well. The injury, she fell off the top of the pyramid and uh, knocked the wind out of her. Emily Bullock, she is okay. By the way. Kind of typifies the night. Oh, why didn't you catch her, Brian? <laughs> Jack of all trades, he should have been there. Signal for a fair catch. First to 10 for the 47 as we get ready to play with 12.56 to go. 34-10 Texas. They led at the half 24-3. Pickney a 24-yard TD pass from Morenz. Holmes, two one-yard runs. Dawson, a 34-yard field goal. That followed a reader field goal for TCU. And then in the second half, Washington, a 29-yard TD reception from Naki to make a 24-10 as the Frogs trying to get back in it. But Texas immediately answered. Jackson, a score on a 16-yard pass from Morenz. And then Dawson, a 42-yard field goal to end the third period. And that's how we sit here as Naki, 14 of 30, sets up for first and 10 at the 47 of the horn. Collins coming toward the line in motion. Woods. He's tackled at the 42 by Kevin Watler. That name ought to be familiar. Watler, his sixth year of eligibility for Texas, the strong inside linebacker due to a medical redshirt season given in 91. He's had both knees operating with ACLs. I know about those that knee operations. In fact, my wife was having orthoscopic surgery done on hers Tuesday morning, 6 o'clock. No fun, athlete or not. That's exactly right. <laughs> she was walking her, her little dog and stepped in a hole. Well, there's team physicians that do orthoscopic on her Tuesday. Penalty on the play on TCU. And Texas deciding if they'll march it back. Nice job by Naki that time just to handle the poor snap and make something out of it. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, repeat the down. Always amazed me, official call holding this kind of situation. Holding on the offense, 10 yards. And another injury to the Texas the side. Norman Watkins has re-injured his shoulder that caused him some problems in the Louisville game. Senior linebacker from nearby Irving. So for a couple of Texas players, the injuries have certainly dampened a homecoming of sorts for those from the Metroplex, Adams and Watkins. Woods lined up behind Naki for second and 18 from the Frog, 48. 45, I should say. Naki dumps it off. Woods got back a pretty good portion of it down to the 42-yard line of Texas. Tremaine Brown made the tackle. Looks like they're going to go with no huddle offense here now. Naki barking those signals out and yelling the receivers to get in the play, so they're going with no huddle. Pick up a 13, makes it third and five of the 42. 34-10 Texas, 11.43 to go, plus with no huddle. Naki going deep, almost a diving grab that time. Great effort given by Jason Tucker. Quarterback Joey Ellis was running side by side. Oh, he really did. Stride for stride, right down the sideline. Right quick. Ellis, a fine prospect. He's a good pro prospect. Pro scouts are looking at him as quarterback in the NFL, senior three letter, looking at him running stride. So see how he's looking for the ball? He doesn't have to turn around and pick it up. He's watching the ball all the way. And that way he will avoid the penalty from the contact situation. And Ellis with an interception for a touchdown this year. Came against Louisville. Ellis out of Tyler, Texas. Another famous Longhorn from Tyler. Shame. Fourth and five, and here is a great grab by John Washington. So TCU going for it on fourth and five. And I mean going for it. If you're going to get it, you might as well go big. And Ellis beaten that time as Washington makes another great grab. He's got the earlier touchdown. I think he lost his concentration a little 
but here I don't think he anticipated it come right back with back-to-back -back plays of this type. He's beaten by a step or two. Now he can't look at the ball. He's got to turn and run. He had no ch chance because he didn't see the football. First and goal from the seven now. Naki. Ooh, that was pretty interference. That, that was all over there. Ooh, linebacker looked like Waller on the play. Collins, the intended receiver. Collins is looking around. He's looking around at the official. Watch 47, Waller. He just bugs him. Look at that. He hit him. <laughs> That's pretty good mug. Oh, I didn't do anything. Oh. <laughs> it's my sixth year. Don't I get a break? Yeah. I've had enough injuries. Yeah, you got a good break there, Kevin. That, that one was, as soon as they give the what me looks, you know they've done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're not suggesting they have replay in college football. No, but the, <laughs> that was, was rather obvious. <laughs> Second and goal from the seven for the Frogs. Naki dumps it off. Woods squirts down to the one yard. This is a well-designed play. They ran up, this is the play they ran earlier. They got called for lineman downfield. Makes a little, it makes a little fake now. And his linemen are sliding out there. Sliding out there, and what a catch! He's coming underneath to make that play. Starts out like he's going the outside, and comes back underneath. And TCU, third and goal from the one. Touchdown. And the signal touchdown. Wood. He almost got it the last time. He gets the carry here, and Coy Woods gets his fourth touchdown of the season as TCU makes it 34 to 16. There's that noise machine. Hey, one thing, you can hear that. Yes, the fog horn sounding loud as Pat Sullivan's club. Tell you what, win or not, and certainly they're, they're not out of it, but they're really showing some moxie here, Coach. Well, they hung in there. That, I think that was extremely important from the, their coach's standpoint and, and their own team morale standpoint. Again, we both said earlier, they're probably going to have a chance to win this ball game, but for the self-respect and next week's opponents, they have a little pride. Davis in motion, Woods alone back now, and Naki rolls out. Complete flag thrown. They'll get another crack at it. Going to be interference as Walker that time did get caught on Brasby. Well, you do it once, you get away with it. Do it a second time. Watch out. Yeah, well, I'm watch you said that a senior experience. Oh, me, I didn't touch you. Oh, man. I know better than that, Rev. Yeah. <laughs> Pass interference on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat the try. It gives you a little bit more option here as far as your play calling in this situation for the two-point conversion. And this is the first two-point conversion that TCU has tried this season. I don't think that was against Walker. It looked like it was against uh, the defensive uh, back there. Uh, Frazier. 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 Yeah, yeah Frazier was on. Walker came across and had his hands on the football. Apologies, Kevin. All right, well, we're going to crack at it here with 10.38 to go in the ball game. 34-16, TCU trying for the two-point conversion. Collins to the top of the screen, two wide outs to the bottom. Woods and Davis in the backfield. Davis, and he's in there. Good call. Good they call. got the two-point conversion. Davis on the run, and it's 34-18. on the two-point conversion. We're back for the kickoff in a minute. Texas to receive the kickoff following the drive that required just 218 with the no huddle. Seven plays and 48 yards. Woods a one-yard run, the two-point conversion. And Davis taking care of business there. Curtis Jackson is deep with the absence of Adams. Curtis Jackson deep for Texas now on the kickoff with 10.38 to go. Bill Landett, Biles, and Brian Jensen with you. Jackson will take it at the 6. 15, 20, tried to find a hole up on the sideline, and it closed quickly. Coverage that time by TCU, and Texas will take over. First and 10 now for the Horns. 
a little clock down. Hey, Brian, wide receiver coach over there, giving some instructions. I'm just going to ask you in the last series, Ed, if it wasn't the time that John Makovic, due to some of the injuries they've had, might pull Morens, but obviously uh, this game so far from being over the way TCU can move the football. Well, I think he wants to give Morens as much as experience, especially early season. Again, you got to remember, Morens is just a, you know, a sophomore. The San Angelo Central High School highly recruited. First and 10 at the 25 for Texas. What a hole! Right up the right side to the 40 and to the 41-yard line. A first down, then some by Roderick Walker. He's got to be close to getting over that 100-yard mark now. Bring the blocker by the offensive line now. Look at, look at the hole down inside. And you know, that, that hole six, seven yards wide there, wide open, and there's not a purple jersey until he gets about 10 yards downfield. And Roderick Walker whose career best game came as a freshman against TCU for 104 yards. He's got 103 right now on 13 carries. 10.09 to go. First and 10. Morenz looking deep for Pitney, and he can't hang on. Pitney had Martin down there, another defensive back, but he had him beat. Tried to hop over one defender. The defensive back was in great position here. He just lost a step or two somewhere along the line. He was in great position. Look at him right there. Now, he kind of tripped or Pinkney knocked him down one or the other. Catchable ball. Once should Pinkney have. got that open, he should have caught the pass. And after the catch he made for the touchdown, it's easy to say that. Well, but that's, that's the question mark that the pro scouts are going to have about Pinkney. Does he, you know, is he consistent? Second and 10 from the 41. Walker wrapped up hard and brought down, leading the way. Michael Yonick. 6'4", 255, sophomore nose guard from Corpus Christi. And Bolton also there. This Mike Bolton, one of the seniors who's been around that would like to see the fruits of his labor pay off under Pat Sullivan in his third year. Kemp out, Lucas in. There's Walker and his numbers now. A loss in the play makes it third and 12 for the Texas Longhorns. 9.24 to go in the game. 34-18, Texas. Morenz in trouble and brought down on the 30-yard line on a sack by Royal West. Well, the big senior from Winona makes the big play, and TCU's saying, don't snuff us out yet. Nine minutes to go. Texas will have to kick it away. Oh, West, just a hard working one of those football players that coaches love to coach. He's a solid person, hard worker. He's going to give you 110% regardless of the what the score is. He's still going to give you 110%. Fourth and 23. Washington is deep as Stevens has to kick from his own 15. A flag oh, thrown no. up. And what a terrible mistake right there. What TC mistake. went after it and they're going to pay for Staten. Fourth down and 23 yards to go. Texas ball, they're gonna bring it back. Fourth down and 23. Boy, Mark Schultes, the punter, his first punt tonight. This is just a just a very, very, very bad mental mistake. You just can't do that to your football team. I mean, just no reason for it. It'll be a first down, your defense gotta go back on the field. And usually when this happens, you talk about discouragement from your defensive team standpoint and letting another team make some big plays. Wouldn't surprise me one bit to see Texas Get it in there easy now. After all that hard work, you get fourth and 23. And uh, we're we're up a head for TCU. Baylor next, and they were leading Southern Cal at last uh, notice. And then at Tulane, and then back in the league with Houston, Rice, SMU, AM, and Tech. But uh, that's a rigorous top five to start with with North Carolina, New Mexico, Kansas, Texas, and Baylor for the Frogs. Uh, you know, I just thought to myself, it's got to be a, a young mistake, and I took a look at 29, and he is a freshman. A freshman make those kind of, freshman out of high school, they make those kind of mistakes. So first and 10 at the 45 for Texas now. Reset in the backfield for Kemp and Walker. Lorenz, short drop, Pickney. 
across midfield. And Pipney brought down there. And want to remind the TCU fans about that Baylor game. That's a 12:05 kickoff next week here at Amon Carter. And they've had the great support here in the early going. Hopefully people will not jump off the bandwagon. They've really hung in pretty well against this Texas squad. And if they don't commit that penalty, who knows what might happen. In motion is Eric Jackson. Second and four. Priest Holmes stopped at midfield. Basically no game. Third and four coming up. Well, and again, good play. And you've got to take your hats off to the CC, but really in this kind of situation, after that horrendous penalty, a lot of defensive teams would really have had a letdown. We're hung in there for two downs. We'll see what they can do it for the third down and give their offense the opportunity to get the ball back again. Holmes out, Walker in for Texas. 7-16 to go. 34-18, Texas trying to get the first down here and just keep the ball and the clock moving. Morenz, incomplete. And a penalty on penalty flag down. In the backfield, Jackson, the intended receiver, holding against Texas. You see Pat Sullivan says, forget it, gang. Let's get the football back here. But they lost a minute 55 and some momentum too, Ed, because they had the big sack right before that punt. Well, I, I, but again, I'm, I'll tell you this. Pat Henderson, the defensive coordinator, is going to be extremely happy when he comes to this stage and, and he's going to pat his defense on the back because they had fourth and 23 and a, and, a, and a stupid special teams penalty forced that defense to go right back out. And they did a good job here of forcing uh, Texas to punt with just three more downs. Both these teams have gone to the 3-4 this year. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, spot foul, repeat the down. Well, and, repeat. And people are, well, people are going to say, why is he doing this? Why didn't he make a punt? He just figured this was a big enough penalty that it's going to add to the offensive field position. If, if they hold stop Texas here, they're just saying to themselves, we get better field position, much better field position than if we allowed them to punt from up around the 45-yard line. That was Pat Henderson. Uh, there on the sidelines and frustrating there. Well, that's okay if you, if you do it, but if you allow Texas to pick it up, then uh, third and 22 from the 33. They got to get to the 45 of TCU and Walker stopped on the play. Walker picked up a few. Chris Pilon, junior from Grapevine, 6'4", 218, made the tackle. Plot moving, 648. Now the wisdom of that call, taking that call, should pay off on a normal punting situation here. They'll have the ball further upfield and with better field position for their offense. And Schultes will kick again for Texas, stands at his own 21. Washington is deep at the 30. Good look at it as Schultes gets it off, not touched this time. Washington will stay away and takes a Texas bounce. Oh, brother, inside the 10-yard line, and Schultes... Got a little help there. Nice roll. Yep. All the theory and all the thinking sometimes doesn't, all, doesn't always work. 48 yards on the kick for John Makovic's punter Schultes. And TCU will have to go 90-plus for the touchdown. Well, Holmes and Davis, the top two backs coming into this game as far as the league stats, and Holmes... 114 yards a game, he's got 84 tonight. Davis, an average of 149, 39 tonight for Andre Davis. Yeah, where's Walker figuring into all that though? Yeah, he's over 100 for Texas. First and 10 from the nine for TCU. And waiting. Friendly for a media timeout. Not us tonight. Well, Walker coming in this game and carried the ball 18 times for 98 yards. He was averaging 5.4, so he's over a couple hundred yards uh, now in these first three ball games. Looks like we may see a quarterback change next time Texas gets the ball. James Brown loosening up. Freshman from Beaumont for the Longhorns as Naki and crew. There's his numbers, 239, 17 of 33. All things considered, he's had a pretty good night. Out of his own end zone now, Naki going deep. And it is picked off. The streak is over for Max Naki. 
as Texas intercepts it intended for Oliver Westbrook comes up with the INT, his second of the year. It's a penalty on the play. See if he can get a break. If this penalty is going to get wrecked for the passer, that's the call, I believe. It's against Texas, so they talk it over. You see, only discussion now whether it was before the pass was intercepted or after the pass was intercepted. And now Texas indicating they're going to get the football, I think. We'll find out. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't buy this now. If he doesn't call rough on the passer, that could have influenced the... Uh, they call it dead ball foul. Hmm. Interception stands. Dead ball, personal foul against the defense. The ball goes over, first down for Texas, 15 yards, first and 10. So James Brown, freshman from Beaumont, Texas, a redshirt freshman out of Westbrook High School, considered by many the number one quarterback in the Texas high school ranks as a senior when he threw for 2,200 yards and 20 touchdowns and ran for 305 yards and six scores. Comes on now for the University of Texas. Got 126 uh, passes until he throws the first interception. As you mentioned, you get in this situation, you're, you're going to have some. If you're going to have any success, you're almost going to have some. You almost could have set up for and said he's going to throw an interception somewhere tonight. Trying to throw the ball downfield. You can't have a lot of patience with 6-13. You need, you, know, you need two scores. That's just what happens to quarterback. Brown's first action for Texas. First and 10 from the 33. Pitches it out to Walker. He's corralled at the 31-yard line. Gain of two, second and eight coming up for Texas. 34-18, we're inside six minutes to go as John Makovic, his club came in ranked number 15. I certainly think they'll bump that a notch or two with the victory here tonight, assuming they hang on, and they've been impressive. Will depend on what the other 14 teams ahead of them did in the main ball game. Walker on a second and eight. He is stopped right at the 30 yard line. It'll be third and seven coming up after a pickup of one that time for Roderick Walker. 17 carries, 106 yards. Evaluate the performance of Blake Brockermeyer. He's an Outland, tr Outland Trophy candidate here, and I would think has to be considered legitimate. Well, I think it's legitimate, but he's done a great job. Uh, he's uh, been nominated for that next stage. I think that's already out, and I don't think he made the next stage in the, in the uh, list of uh, 10 uh, that have come down this, this past week. But he's a fine prospect. He's a fine pro prospect. And he has the size, and he's had a great ball game. I mean, his run blocking has just been... Uh, been tremendous and obviously uh, he hasn't had, they haven't had much pressure on Shane Moran so his uh, pass blocking has to be that way but look how big he is look how he stands above the other other Six players five. Out there. 300 all conference pick and dedicated is the word to describe this guy well, those arms are little tree trunks <laughs> take your choice this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of special order sports it is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience any publication reproduction retransmission or the use of the pictures descriptions or accounts of this game without the express written consent of special Special Order Sports, Texas Christian University, University of Texas, and Edward Biles is prohibited. If you get my permission, you're going to pay for it. <laughs> we got our hand out, folks. <laughs> 520 remaining with a timeout on the field. And, uh, well, the world's biggest frog has yet to be deflated over tonight's contest. Well, 34-16. Well, we now have an incredibly shrinking crowd. Well, you know, I think it... People here at TCU that they're saying you've got to do more than just put on a game. You've really got to entertain people and make it a family atmosphere. And uh, the huge crowd here tonight, the 37,000 against Kansas, they're headed the right direction. Yeah, I think they'll bounce back very well next week. They had skydivers here before the game, fireworks at the Kansas game. Jackson in motion for Texas on third and second. Brown with a rollout. He in trouble and brought down on the 40 yard line. The TCU certainly had quit. Jay Dafford blitzing through from the linebacker spot. Looking through a sponsor. 
comes the ball for him. Boy, that drop ball, that's kind of getting a little weaker, though. Must be, must be down to about 100 decimal points out of 100, 120. Good play defensively. Good call in anticipation of the rollout. It rolled right out with him and came up in his face. We'll take a brief break with 5.06 remaining. It's Texas 34-18. Here's our situation. Texas trying to wrap up a 34-18 victory. 5.06 to go in the ballgame. Schultz on again to punt. He and Vosikman splitting the duties. He had punted twice before tonight. Jason Tucker is deep for TCU. And Baylor and USC continue to have quite a ball game. USC on top now, 14-10 in LA in the second period. Fourth and 17, and standing on his own 45-yard line is Schultz. This one will carry and just drops dead at the 10, and the Texas smothers it there. And TCU will have it in a big hole. Nice job by Schultz to put them inside their own 20. Well, that's the short, uh, see, that's another thing you have in football now. You got a, a short range punter. Schultz, of course, is a designated short range punter. What do you think of the job Pat Sullivan's done here? 16 and 1 his third year, 2 8 and 1 the first, 4 and 7 last year. I think he's got things headed in the right direction. Well, I, again, I think you got to take a look. He's got Ryan Tucker, sophomore offensive lineman at the left tackle position. He's got Brewer Jr. He's got Naki with another year coming back. Woods is a sophomore. Andre Davis is, is a junior. Washington played a lot tonight. Bracefield is a junior. Yeah, he's got him coming along. I think just a little slower per, uh, than uh, Makovich's program. It was a different uh, situation that he came into. First to ten, and bumped hard on the play. Davis got hit. He got rocked that time by Westbrook, who had the interception earlier. Yeah, and again, see, that, this, this is some time for the officials over there. Jump on top of this right away. Don't let the so-called taunting and, you know, made, made a good play. But you don't, you're ahead 34 to 16. Don't, don't embarrass the player. Good hit right here. Catch. Good stick. Good job. Excellent job. But don't come up and get in his face. Now that should be an automatic penalty. See? That should be a penalty. I don't, and I, you know, official's probably going to call it against the purple. The official didn't see the play. Did not see the play. This is poor officiating. This is poor officiating. Personal foul on the offense at the distance to the goal. Second down. That's and the official react and they get the react. Well, that's an official though with five minutes ago in the game. He's a little tired. Didn't see the whole play. Should not have called it. Davis comes out. Derek Colors checks in for TCU. It's second down. Well, let's see what they make it now. And that's set it at the six. You know, and that's one of the things that they try to stress in college. We don't want all this. We don't want this taunting. We don't want this getting in guys' face. Second and 13. Would agree 100% with you. 4.28 to go, Naki out of his own end zone. And unloads, Woods still chugging away out across the 20. He's got the first down. Nice job by Coy Woods, and boy, give Naki credit again for hanging in there. Yeah, John Nakovich, you know, the Texas coach doesn't want that either. He doesn't want his players doing that kind of stuff. You got, you know, you got a 16th one lead. You got the game one. Don't need to embarrass people. Actually, oh, yeah, great, great hustle here by Woods. He really, his legs driving, made the first down. First and 10 for the 20. Naki out of the shotgun. Intercepted at the 15. And out of bounds at the seven yard line. Tremaine Brown with the INT colors made the play. Second interception of the night and it comes back to back for Naki. Tremaine Brown. Six foot, two ten sophomore from Amarillo. A running back that had been moved to linebacker, so he knew what to do with it after the grab. Well, mixed communication between the receiver and the quarterback. And that will happen at, again at this stage of the game. Well, let our Texas viewers know. I'm sure you're all concerned about the condition of Mike Adams, the fine wide receiver and return man. We unfortunately know nothing more to report other than he left the game where they right knee sprain and don't know any more as far as his condition and his availability for the big game next week against Colorado. If we find out, we certainly will pass it along. Coleman in the backfield. He gets the carry for Texas and the touchdown. And he's, he dropped the football and a flag is thrown too. 
but one official has signaled touchdown. He crossed the plane of the goal line. He crossed, crossed the plane of the goal line before he fumbled. This is a good call by the officials. He's across the plane. It's going to be a touchdown. Well, other guys say I'm safety, but I think the guy on the far side, unless he eats his, unless he eats his flag, uh, eats it, he came in with his hands up, sending across the plate. Our cameras show that the ball did not cross the goal line. Obviously, the officials trying to sort it out here. We'll have a chance to show you here. If that's the case and they understand that, then the safety would be the right call. Well, the official come across to the sideline there. The official come across on the sideline and said it was a touchdown. Now, let's see whether he changed his mind or not. And at this point, the officials have lost control of the ball game because of the play back there against TCU. Let's see what they do now. Had Sullivan waiting for an explanation. 4-0-3 to go. Now, let's see what they, what they called. The official on the far side came in and signaled touchdown. Let's see what he did. Fumble at the one-yard line, into the end zone, recovered by TCU, touchback, first down. Touchback, I think I said safety, I beg your pardon. Apparently that's a correct call. Apparently it was a correct call. But the official on the far side came up and threw his hands up. Here it is. Oh, we've got it, we know that he's not, we, we know that he's not in. Coleman, ball's gone right there. The ball is gone right there before he went in the end zone. He did not have control to see it hit down there. That it's a good, good. Uh, that's a correct call. That's a correct call. No question. The ball is knocked out before it goes in. The ball's on the ground right there. There's it. And look like Lefevers and Yannick combined to knock that ball out. That's and John Makovic obviously well, not happy with the call. Well, he was. All he was doing was the same thing. And I, he saw the official signal touchdown. Yeah. He said, if you saw that, you must have seen it cross the plate. Now TCU coming back out of the backfield. Coy Woods on the reception. Another flag is thrown. All of this goes right back to a play that the officials loafed on over there earlier. And the other part of this is, if you're thinking, how could this be a rivalry when Texas has won 25 in the last 26? Well, the last TCU win was here two years ago, and some of the Texas folks, the players in particular, felt they rubbed it in a bit when the players of TCU tore down the goalpost. personal foul here. And then you add that bad feeling, Ed, to a conference opener, both teams riding high, and then you let one get out of control and it just all snowballs. Well, it well, it doesn't take long, it doesn't take long. I, you know, you know, I'm sure this is, a, this is a late hit. Good call by the official. No question that, that that is a, is a, is a good call. And you had, you had a really a good, good oh. well-played, hard-hit football game up until the top by Texas. Now, TCU is very frustrated. Barrett Robbins, who played every snap last year, made the foul. Two, uh, second and 17 now, and it is complete out to the 26-yard line. They needed to get to the 30 for the first down. Jason Tucker on the reception. And 3.35 to go, and what may be the longest 3.35 of any football game, the way these two are continuing to throw it, penalize against one another, and still 34-18 Texas. Well, TCU is going to do, the, do their game, and their game is to throw the ball, and when they're behind, you know, nothing says they can't score quick, and onside it. And whistles will bring this one to a stop. And another flag thrown. Movement by the, movement by the right offensive guard. Movement but there was the right a second flag, I think, tossed that time because it looked like a shot was taken by one of the TCU linemen after the offsides. Ball start on the right. offense. Five what? yards. Repeat third down. Right now, Pat Sullivan needs to get a timeout, get his team over, and kind of settle him down a little bit. I think, you know, I think it's, this is a good time to take a timeout, even though it's late, late in the ball game. You just got to settle this football team down. It's deteriorated into individual personalities. There's a the coaching staff unhappy with Milby, giving that on the sideline. Boyd Milby, a senior from Paris, Texas, and a guy who's started 30 ball games now. So obviously that's not the kind of reaction you expect from a player. Well, and his seniors have provided him with a great leadership. He wants him to continue to do that. All frustration now. Scoreboard, the scoreboard plays are happening right now. And another INT by 
Texas on a third and nine. And the Longhorns this time, it's Chris Carter, the sophomore from Tyler, Texas. Carter comes up with the INT. He had four interceptions a year ago to lead him and picks one off here. His first interception this season. Well, they're reading his eyes on this when they're just looking. He's looking right, see him looking all the way to where he's throwing. Now watch Carter, watch Carter reading him and see the play, see him coming, coming in. He read the, Max's eyes all the way, knew exactly where he was going to throw the ball, got a great break on it. So Naki, who went three games and three quarters without an interception this season, has now given up three here in the fourth quarter. Well, we got 3.15 to go, first and 10 for the 21. And Brown again in the quarterback for the Longhorns. He gives to Coleman, who thought he scored the last time he touched the ball. <laughs> and he plows ahead to about the 16 or 17. And you got Robert Walker's mother down there saying, where's my son? I said he needed to score. Well, Texas playing a lot of folks. They are playing a lot of folks and has played a lot of folks in this ball game from the very beginning. A lot of substitution. I'm sure the thoughts was they could wear a TCU team down in the latter part of the ball game. And it's second and six of the 17. When you take a look at this one, you got Ed, when you wonder, yeah, at the half, TCU was being dominated the line of scrimmage. They moved the ball here in the second half, but they haven't been able to stop the other guy. And they were not only one in offense in this league, they're number eight in defense. And they're going to have to, even though their defense at times has been shored up tonight, they're going to have to do a better job if they're going to have success the rest of the way. No question of that. Five yards. No repeat play. third down. Well, Texas got a lot of their, lot of their backup offensive linemen in there. I see Buster Money in there. I, mean, I think all things considered, again, 18 against this Texas team has not been a bad effort considering the way Texas was owning them early. Well, you know, there's some good, there's some bad in this ball game that they're going to have to build on. Take the good things and build on them and try to coach the, the bad things and correct them for the next week's ball game. It is second down and, and Texas third down. Second down. now second and 11, the ball at the 22-yard line. Well, I think John just going to, they're going to run the football now just to. That's a fumble there. That's a live ball. That could be picked up and run. And it is. It's across midfield for TCU. Coming up with it is McWilliams. He gets the bend a little frustration. Pryor knocked it loose. McWilliams recovers it. He's had a couple of interference calls tonight, so he's got to feel a little bit better now. TCU gets it back with 2.20 to go. Well, people are going to say, why are they passing at, th at this stage of the ball game? And, and the problem is when you got a, you got your backup quarterback in there, you want to give him some experience. You know, you can't just say hand off all the time. you got to see what he can do under the heat of battle. Of course, you got your second offensive line and receivers, but that's why he was putting the ball in the air. He just wanted to get Brown. That's the first opportunity Brown would have to have to pass, and uh, you just want to see what he can do. And obviously, he didn't do well. You never saw prior. First to 10 from the 46. Flag is tossed, and TCU completes it to Andre Davis. And we'll sort it out again. Texas. Well, we had a good ball game early to the last four minutes here. We've had penalty, penalty, penalty. Texas best start since 85. That year they opened up with three straight wins. Went on to go eight and three and spot in the Blue Bonnet Bowl. You know, and you look at the league predictions, TCU picked for the middle of the pack, Texas near the top with AM. What do you think right now after three games? Offside well, I think it, on the it defense. Think from what we've seen so far, offense, uh, you know, it's a three team uh, race. Of course, AM can't down. figure in the championship because of being on probation. So you got to look at Baylor and Texas and AM, but AM can't go to the top. So it looks like it's probably a Baylor uh, Texas situation if they continue to play the way they played in these first three ball games. Of course, it's a long season, but uh, Texas and Baylor play on Thanksgiving at 10 a.m. at Baylor to end the season. You see USC leading the Bears right now, 21-10. And the other factor that, that is important is, is injuries. I mean, uh, you know, something happens to Lorenz. Now you're looking at that quarterback who just saw fumble the football. First to 10 for the 46. Naki. And Woods dropped it. That stops the clock at 2.08 to go. Elected to catch the ball before he started to run. Well, many of them have scattered here at Eamon Carter Stadium as uh, Texas 
took control of this one midway in the first period when they got a touchdown pass from Morenz, the picnic of 24 yards, and Holmes a one-yard run after a fumble on the kickoff. And they've controlled throughout since that point. Here's Woods. Oh, good tackle. Nearly got the first down. I'm going to spot it at the 38-yard line. Allen made the tackle, sophomore from Lubbock. Ty Allen, that's a good tackle. Good hit. Texas fans to celebrate the 3-0 start. 143 remaining, third and two. Naki to put it up again, and Davis knocked loose of the football. Jermaine Brown, who's got one of the interceptions, was there. I was tipped, I think, at the line of scrimmage a little bit, took it off of the, off of the line he wanted to throw it to. So that Baylor score, also from the Southwest Conference, the Ohio State pounded Houston 52 0 in a non league game. Rice won in the Big Eight at uh, Iowa State 28 18. SMU and Tech played in Lubbock. Tech won that one 35 7 within the conference. And another drop ball as turning around before he had it was Coy Woods. Uh, ball was thrown awful hard. And Naki, who for three quarters played pretty doggone good, is at a rough fourth quarter. Now he drills us, and this is a short pass. He really drills us pretty hard. Uh, nothing's going right right now. Yep. yep. With 1.32 to go. Executive producer of Special Order Sports is Mike and asked to see you. Senior producer Robert Steinfeld. Tonight's game directed by Kevin Spivey. Technical director Van Williams. Associate producer Jim Feldman. Engineer in charge George McDaniel. Statisticians Ted Ganji and Fraser Maxwell. Spotter Charlie Durker. And our pay-per-view coordinator Wendy Alvarez. On first down, this is Priest Holmes. Going to get that 100-yard night across the 40 of TCU. Line of scrimmage was the 38. 20-yard plus pickup. And Priest Holmes came in with 27, 227 on the rushing end. And two touchdowns, scored two in the first half tonight. Thanks to all of those. You're seeing the names flashed in front of you that made the telecast possible tonight. John Makovic sitting back to watch the end with 106 to go. 107 now for Holmes on the ground on 22 carries. So he and Walker both over 100. Coleman in trouble and brought down at the 45 yard line. Yannick there. 46 seconds and counting as Texas Hey, Yannick's a good sophomore out of Corpus Christi. Had to step in to replace Rydell, who got hurt early in the ball game. It's a big place. Second and 16 now from the 45 of TCU. Brown comes out of there, <laughs> and they catch him from behind, or he's off to the races. Well, I don't know what the play was. That was a quarterback sneak. I thought it was almost a quarterback <laughs> set down with, with the ball. How he bounced out of there. I think John McAvoy's more. What I was that? He, yeah, Did we call that? Yeah, I don't think he wanted to run the ball. I think he wanted to sit down with it. Brown says, I'm not taking another shot from those guys. Everybody knows what's coming. Yeah. Well, the 100-yard backs, Walker and Holmes and Texas, with a convincing 34-18 victory over TCU here at Amon Carter Stadium. We'll be back to wrap it up. Stay with us. Texas wins by 16, 34, 18. Priest Holmes, two one-yard dives in the first half. And Shea Morenz with a touchdown pass to Pickney and Jackson as Texas never really in doubt after things were a little slow offensively for both ball clubs to start the ball game. Horns up 24-3 at the half. They win it 34-18. And let's go down now to Brian Jensen. 
I've got Priest Holmes with me, and Priest, uh, the ground game today was a, a, a huge factor for Texas. Definitely, definitely. We came in here trying to run the ball a lot. We wanted to put it on the on the floor a lot, and definitely it did work out and opened up a lot of the passes where they had a lot of room to throw a lot of bombs. When the offense was able to get Lavelle Pinckney in early and uh -huh. scoring early, was that a major lift for you? Definitely. First game back, playing productive, add, adding points onto the team, helping us out, and he's doing a great job. Final thing, there was a lot of talk coming into this game about how important it was for both teams to get off to this good start. Right. How, how do you re, how do you come off of this one now and take it? Definitely, this is pushing us into the conference with a big win. Yes, definitely. Freeze, thank you very much. Back up to you guys. In a day and age when most players seem ready to yank that helmet off before they get in the end zone, nice to see a guy being interviewed with a helmet on. In ex <laughs> inexperience. That's inexperience. <laughs> I guarantee if Freeze told him that's inexperience. Won't ever happen again. Final thoughts, Ed, on the game tonight. Well, it's an impressive win from Texas standpoint. I think they, they did things they wanted to do. Offensive line, good play, running game, mixed up the passing game. Another step for them to have a successful season. A little bit of a setback for TCU. I think they can bounce back from I think they can have a real good season because I think they'll learn from this from this loss. And Fred Biles and Brian Jensen, this is Bill Land. Once again, the final score of tonight's game, 34-18, Texas the winner. This has been a presentation of Special Order Sports in association with HSE and Texas Christian University.